call it a beer drink drinking now. day. Is, that, is it really a thing? Happy National Beer Drinking Day. Today's uh, a national holiday, I guess, for uh, for beer drinking, and we're drinking beer. So happy National yeah. Holiday. Happy holidays. <laughs> We are live, the dogs are all barking, and we got a lot to talk about. Uh, It's been a busy week, uh, obviously, coming off of WrestleMania 31 last Sunday night. And then, last night, Monday Night Raw, we're right back to Weekly Raws. It's back to the same old S. It's it's, it's the same old programming once again, folks. Crap, you know? Uh, I didn't think Raw was terrible last night. I didn't think it was great. No. I thought it was decent. It was okay. I mean, Raw wasn't a... Uh, it, it was wasn't, Raw. It wasn't a bad show. It was, it was Raw. A, it was an episode of Raw. Uh, we're already building to Extreme Rules. I like the fact that they already have three matches announced. For, I like the uh, fact... It, it seems like they're taking those titles more seriously now. Now that they've got... Like we've been talking for weeks, months, really, that you know they need to make those secondary titles mean more. The U.S. the I.C. Right, title, right? They They're doing a good job top, of that. They put them on the top two guys in the company, Cena, Daniel Bryan. Um, they're announcing matches on pay-per-views, like you said, weeks in advance, so they have time to build and get interesting. Title means something in that scenario, in that equation. You know, they're they're doing good booking right now. Yeah, yeah. As far as long, you know, short term, long. Well, as far as the mid card titles, you know what I mean. Um, that's, well, even that's, the, the world you know, title, they got that set up, too. So. Right, right, right. Uh, speaking of the world title, there's four stories that uh, we're going to talk about here tonight. Number one is uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, you, we put the reports up last week that his family was, was pissed off. Michael Hayes comes out. Keep in mind, I mean, Michael Hayes comes out and denies that Roman Reigns' his family was upset. <clears throat> That's not true. Uh, and, and Michael Hayes is is a company man. It was so bad, and we'll talk about this here in just a little bit. It was so bad that his father and his uncle wanted him to quit. That's what you just told me. I haven't heard that part of the story. Um, just now. And we're going to put it up on That's the nuts. website. But they wanted him to quit the company. Roman had no problems whatsoever and was kind of the guy to say, listen... Calm down. Yeah. It's WWE. Not it's that scripted. Serious. It's to be not that serious. Going to war but man, was his family pissed off. Uh, numerous different members, especially his father, who was very outspoken about it. Um, so we'll talk about that here in more in depth uh, in, in just a little bit. Also, Steve Austin, another one that came out on his podcast today and said no issues. Between WWE and I, everything's good. There's no heat. I was never supposed to be at WrestleMania. There were never any plans for me at WrestleMania. Da 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 da. Again, this is Steve Austin. And granted, listen, there weren't any original plans for Austin to be at WrestleMania. The plan was WWE expected Austin, as well as many others. Uh, to fly into San Jose, Santa Clara, for WrestleMania weekend. Everybody comes. <coughs> when he got there, they were they had a an idea that they were going to pitch to well, him when got he got there. there, and he never got yeah, there. You said when he got there. Um, and then so that's WrestleMania. The podcast thing is a whole different story, and there is clearly a reason why we saw Chris Jericho's yeah. podcast and, he and not tough, Austin's. He turned down Tough Enough. I forgot to mention that. He turned down, t- uh, they offered him the, the gig on Tough Enough. Which he denies. Well, no, he said there was a scheduling conflict, that uh, he had uh, another season of his, one of his reality shows, Broken Skull or the other one, Redneck Island. Got picked up in the timing issues. He was going to be busy with that. We right. Filming t- so he couldn't do it. So he had to turn it down. So he right. had to turn it down. He said he would have loved to do it because it was his first real hosting gig on TV and he had fun right. doing it. The podcast thing is That's interesting. a whole nother story. You know the rumor on that is the China thing. We didn't have that. Right, 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 right. you want to... But I was saying, uh, I mean, well, I, I mean, he, he brought up the China stuff with, with the porn, and would she be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, because Triple H was the guest, and, you know, Triple H has history with China, obviously, right, and he right. asked, you know, why, or would she be in the Hall of Fame, and if not, why kind of thing. And, and Triple H's response was kind of, you know, she's made some de- decisions outside of yeah, the ring. And the little that kid Googles her name and sees that she's right. doing porn, you know. 
It's not going to go over well. I mean, Mike Tyson's in the Hall of Fame. He was in jail for rape. You know what I mean? They've got people, if you right. Google their names, they don't have the most spotty, clean resumes. Right. But uh, right. the, more, the bigger issue with that was that it, it pretty much, they, they kind of blamed it for the reason why China popped up on YouTube with these videos and accusing Triple H of, of physically abusing her in the past. And right. That led to Triple H having to release an official statement because there was so many you know outlets picking that story up. So right. he had to, like, you know, say it's all bullshit. You know, he had to release a statement, which basically got WWE bad press at a time when they don't need it with, the, you know, the stock and everything like that. So right. it right. was basically just a, you, you had to ask that dumb question and start to snowball of, a, of effects, you know, which I don't right. even think they've communicated because if you listen to Austin's explanation on his podcast like you were talking about, he comes at it from, like, there's no issues with us. I know, I know. But... That just just because he's not aware of the issues doesn't mean they don't exist. You know what I mean? Right. In other words, WWE has beef with him. He just doesn't know about it or well, isn't it addressing it. To, to his credit, he wasn't supposed to be at WrestleMania. All right. He the, they they didn't call him Sounds in like advance. Was, but. I, 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 he, there was nothing booked for him at WrestleMania. When he flew into town, which never happened. It sounds like what was WWE was saying, he was just say, supposed to come and appear. You know, maybe for the access or something. You know, because obviously oh they, they they invited him, so they were expecting him there. And then once he was Where there... Where did you get this invite that they invited Austin? Well, they had... I haven't heard anything about that. They sent a car for him at the airport because they were expecting him to come in on a flight, right? That was I haven't heard that. that. There was a story that came out that said he was supposed to be on the same flight as Undertaker. And they even had a car uh, service sent to the airport to pick him up, wait, you know, because they were expecting him to come in on that flight. Right. And the guy, like, stood around. Nobody should have lost and showed up, so he just had to go back, you know. Right, right, and right. And it was a story that they had a dressing room reserved for him backstage at Levi's Stadium. We have a photo. We have a photo of that with Austin's name on it. So there you go. So uh, obviously so they were expecting him on So the they had level. something planned. Yeah, maybe it was just little stuff like sign autographs, this and that. And then once he was there, they were going to drop the thing on. Like, hey, while you're here, we've got this idea. And I think he's playing it cool, man. I really do. And you, I mean, somebody in the chat room said that Austin is brutally honest on his podcast, and he is. He is. He is. Absolutely. That's why he's not on the network anymore. He is. And that's <coughs> part of the reason with China. Yeah. But I just, I, I, I think when Austin came out on the podcast today, I think he's playing it cool, man. I think he's downplaying it, uh, which is not like him to do. No. I mean, normally he's, if, if, if there's a problem, Austin comes out and says, there's a problem. But Although I, when think, it's him, I, I, I think... When it's, when it's him, sometimes he'll He'll not lie about it, not tell a bullshit version of it, but he might downplay it a little bit. Act like it doesn't even exist. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and like that's, that's kind of seems what's what's going on here. Who knows? I'm I'm sure more will uh, will come out about it here in the uh, in the coming weeks. But they were fully ready for him at yeah. WrestleMania. Had everything prepared. And you gotta assume he would have been doing the interview with Cena last night. To yeah. Jericho. And then the podcast thing. There's no yeah. reason to take Austin's podcast. That was the most two off the network, right? Yeah, Austin and McMahon, Austin Triple H. The two interviews he did were probably the two best original shows. And then all. Ever had the All ever. of a sudden, and if you listen, to, I know you listen to Austin's podcast. Yeah. Uh, somebody sent me an email the other day and said, for the last couple of months, Austin hasn't been plugging the network like he had been. Yeah, he was when he first started. Like yeah, he, was he was always plugging, plugging all the, the time. network, and now there's no plugs for that. Not to mention that I guess he hasn't been uh, as obnoxiously almost yeah. like part of the yeah. all commentary. Yeah. Center. like every 20 minutes, he's got to do a plug for the network. No plugs for he's the network, and anymore, then no. all of a sudden, Chris Jericho. They start hyping that last week. The Jericho's podcast is going to be on the network. Jericho's no more always, Austin. Everything Austin. Yeah, Jericho's been, has always been the WWE front. Even up. before this network thing, they would give him the guest, not Austin. Like they gave him. Triple H, they right. gave him Hulk Hogan, right. they gave him Pat Patterson. You know what I mean? Steve Austin's doing Jim Ross twenty times. And yeah, just, something, know. something's clear. Something's definitely up. Something's definitely I think up it's there. It's just as simple as Jericho is willing to be the company man, you know, the where, company line, yeah, like, the, so. like the Miz of podcasts, so. like say all the right WWE words, <laughs> right? And, Get the know, questions. Avoid the, Although yeah. Jericho last night, I mean. To his credit, uh, it didn't seem like he held back. I mean, right. yeah, it wasn't. But there was one. There was one moment that he brought up where uh, Daniel Bryan, during his Hall of Fame speech, uh, had said something along the lines of, "This is scripted." What we do or, this is fiction. Is, what we do is fiction, yeah. and they edited that out of the Hall of Fame ceremony yeah. that aired on the USA Network, you know, following Raw last week. But Jericho brought that up, now, and he, see, and he that's, said... That's the thing. Jericho didn't bring that up. He did. Cena brought it up in an answer. So Cena did say stuff that was, you know... Is that what it... Okay, so Cena brought it up. So my point is, right. Jericho isn't asking hard-hitting questions. True. Cena said some 
behind the scenes stuff in some of his answers. But right. It wasn't because Jericho pressed him with this hard question and oh right. god I gotta give an answer. And if it was answer. Austin it would have been pressed. It press, would have been press, the other press, way around. Austin right, would have right. been getting that shit out of him as opposed to seeing it just offering I, it to him. I, I thought Jericho did a really, really good job last night. When I watched that podcast I said, you know what? I expected more Fluff. You know, like yeah. you said, toe the company line yeah. and with the questions, but there was some hard hitting yeah. questions. I don't know about hard hitting questions. I, 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 I think pretty Cena, good, man. I think Cena gave some hard hitting answers, but I don't think Jericho like pressed him with any like, oh god, I can't believe you asked him that. Yeah. With Austin, yeah. there was at least one time during both interviews where like, wow, I can't believe he, he asked yeah. that. Yeah. So I think it's more like Austin's like the Mike Wallace of interviews. Like he gets <laughs> the real news, the interview news. And then Jericho would be like Maria Menounos or something. Like, he's right, 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 right. good at schmoozing with celebrities with a microphone. And right, you know, right. Smiling and giggling and shit. So those are, are, are two of the stories, right? Now, uh, another story, uh, and we'll save the biggest one for uh, for last, but uh, Scott Steiner and Hulk Hogan. That's physically the biggest one. That motherfucker's a whore. Could you imagine he was, if he was after you? Man. Woo-hoo-hoo. Man. Uh, here's, here's what we know happened, and TMZ followed up today. Turns out now the, uh, the police are involved. Yeah, yeah as, I wrote uh, that article this morning. Hogan. Steiner had that comment. <laughs> Fucking brilliant Steiner quote. Yeah, I know, <laughs> yes. I know. He's crazy, man. Well, oh, here, here's the deal. It, what we know is Hulk Hogan's wife flew into San Jose, Santa Clara. Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer. Flew Smoking in. Uh, ahead of Hogan. Yes. Came in by herself. Um, I don't know if Hogan's kids... I, I'm, I'm guessing Probably it was just her. Kind of media obligations, so he had to come in a day later. Or something right, but he, he didn't fly in with her. So, she's at the baggage claim, waiting for her bags, and uh, <laughs> Scott Steiner approaches her and basically says something along the lines of, when I see Hogan, I'm going to kill him. Tell Terry he's tell dead. Terry tell Terry he's tell, dead. He, ter, ter, tell Terry I'm going to kill him. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. Now, it's Jennifer, Jennifer, according to her and, and people, <laughs> Jennifer didn't know who Scott she, Steiner was. She didn't recognize him as a person. Cause she, you know, she hasn't been with Hogan all these years throughout the business. She just... After he retired, yeah. they hooked up. You know, she got to know who Hulk right. Hogan is, but that doesn't mean she knows every wrestler because she's been with him for all these years. So, and, you know, she immediately calls Hulk. Yes, and says, "I was just threatened, or this you big were threatened." Fucking guy, yeah. This big guy came up and said that he was going to kill you. So, turns out that it was Scott Steiner. Now, yeah. they got of course, tape. you're in an airport, yeah. so there are security cameras everywhere. Right. Huh. So Hogan immediately flies in to be with his wife, gets there, they go to the airport, this is probably the next morning, I think, I think it's with TMZ at up. The next morning they go and they file a police report. They view the surveillance footage, they get Steiner on camera, yes. they know it's him. They, him bag, they the file a police report and that's kind of where things stand. Now, so now, investigating Hogan, felony terrorist threats. I think the terrorist threats is because it happened in an airport. I think the terrorist Not sure. is that because he threatened to kill him. Right. So he's okay. terrorizing him. He's ta- you know. He's all right. All right. So they've got a uh, a police report out, and I guess cops want to speak with uh, with Steiner over this. Hogan also at the Hall of Fame ceremony and WrestleMania, uh, there were signs on the door yeah, the for photo, security. Right on got a photo of that yeah. as well uh, up on the websites where they've got a photo of Scott Steiner, and it basically says, "Do not it's allow like this you man to the building." See like a missing person sign right it looks right. like that only it's warning you know instead of beware a dog it's beware of scott steiner do not allow yeah. this man into the, be- Under, into the building hogan uh threatened that he wasn't going to appear at the hall of fame wasn't going to appear at wrestlemania if steiner got inside the building yeah. so they went to extreme lengths to keep steiner far away from the hall of fame from yeah. wrestlemania the backstage area you're not getting it. Not getting it. Um, and, yeah, they're going to investigate, and he might end up getting arrested out of this And, you know, thing. he's got that lawsuit with TNA where he came on Twitter, and he just... And he's known as a bad, and there's that story about yeah. him and DDP fighting in WCW. Yeah, and, yeah. And he tried to scratch DDP's eyes out, and DDP he's, talking about he's insane. He's and, crazy, and He's got man. the amateur wrestling background from, from Michigan, so he's like a legit yeah. badass, plus yeah. he's a fucking ox. Yeah. So he's strong as shit. Oh, Hogan and versus Steiner crazy. now in a real fight? God, Hogan. Steiner, I wonder why Hogan's yeah. scared. Steiner you know? still take half the Jeez. current, you know what I mean, yeah. wrestling landscape. You know? <laughs> he's still one of the toughest sons of bitches. Sometimes 
Scott needs to control his his anger. He can right? be the and nicest guy. We yeah. This, uh, show, didn't like, we talk boss. to him? But didn't we have him on WCR TV back before, in the yeah. day? Yeah. Back in the yeah. Day. But uh, it was when WCW was still in business. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. When he was like the top guy, like, he was the only guy left. But um, what was I gonna say? Yeah. Charlotte. Charlotte showed me a clip of Steiner with some fat fan. Uh, look who's talking, fat fan. But uh, it was uh, like uh, an enormously fat fan. At like a wrestling convention, like WrestleCon or something. Yeah. And yeah. they let him shoot a promo with St- Scott Steiner. So Scott Steiner and this fat fan are pretending like they're a tag team and they're right. calling out Harlem Heat. And it's the dumbest <laughs> shit. The fat guy doesn't know how to cut it. So he's like, "We're gonna, we're gonna sleep with your chicks before the show and give them herpes, and then you're gonna get herpes, and then, and then we're gonna break your leg." You know, like yeah, shit like yeah, that, like yeah, the yeah. weirdest trash talk you've ever heard. Shit, but Steiner's yeah. like smiling and like. Well, what you meant to say is we're going to screw the hot chicks and we're going to do this. So he's trying to help me. He like, seems like the nicest guy ever. He's really going out of his way to help kind of real-life promo right. with this fucking fat right. nerd wrestling fan. But he's so nice to him. So yeah. there's that side of Steiner, and then there's the I'm going to scratch your fucking eyes out the EVP <laughs> side of him. That, that's the side that's after Hogan. So Hogan might be 6'8". He might have 25-inch pythons, whatever the fuck. <laughs> but he's old. His knees ain't what they used to be. Uh, and there's I a know. fucking lunatic uh, after him. So yeah, he's uh, yeah. going about it the legal way. He's he's probably doing the right thing. If if yeah, yeah. if I'm Hogan, I think I'm yeah, I turn that one over. Of, uh, of Scotty I turn that one over to the local authorities. And then here's the fourth and the biggest story uh, from the past week. Anybody in the chat room want to take a guess what we're gonna get to next? Get to our live chat room, wzronline.com. Slash chat, wzronline.com. Slash chat. So <coughs> last Friday. Last Friday. Uh, WWE sends out a tweet. They put an article up, a very brief article on www.com. Oh, yeah. AJ Lee has announced her retirement. That's a sad story. From WWE. Um, now, retirement from WWE. Is she done with wrestling as a whole, Sounds or like, yeah. would she go to a Ring of Honor or oh, no, a, that's a situation TNA? Where or she's retiring what? pretty much to get out of her contract, you know, so she can quit. But, uh, yeah, you can't just go to another wrestling company because if you come out of retirement, you're under contract. No, be. they worded it WWE retirement. Yeah. Not retirement from professional wrestling. Yeah. WWE retirement. Whatever, but, yeah, she's retiring. Two different things. But it's a legal, it's a, it's a legal loophole, like, to where you don't have to come to work anymore because you retired. True. Even though you have a contract True. and legally you have to be there to work, if you retire, they can't force you against your will. Right. To, so, yeah, but if she came back... At least this is how it worked in MMA. I remember Randy Couture had a contract with UFC. Mm-hmm. He said he retired because he wanted to fight Fedor. UFC couldn't sign Fedor. So Randy was going to retire from the UFC and then sign with Elite XC or whatever company it was at the time and fight Fedor. Mm-hmm. UFC, once he tried to sign the fight, and they even had Fedor and Couture did stare-downs and right. they had like posters made, video packages and shit. Mm-hmm. They were already beginning promoting the fight and UFC caught wind of it and they're like, no, 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 no. You retired, so we said you don't have to fight in honor of the last fight on your contract that you still have with us. Right. But if you're coming out of retirement fighting again, you owe us a fight per this contract. So if you're going to fight, it's going to be for us. And right. that's how Brock Lesnar and Couture happened. Brock knocked out Couture, became the champion, history was made. Okay. Now, in the AJ Lee situation, I don't know if that's how it works. If she's retiring, she doesn't have to wrestle anymore. Now, if she wants to wrestle for somebody else, then she's either got to finish her contract with WWE, has to be released from her contract, mm-hmm. or, you know what I mean? Right. Something like right. that. Well, they, they, they put it up on .com. You know, and I was saying to you, <coughs> listen, she goes out and she gets married to CM Punk. And we know CM Punk's issues with WWE can't stand the company. That says he's never going to be back. And, and Sounds like they're not on the best. Hated the politics yeah. and everything else, right? And you agree with this. I mean, let's be honest. I remember when AJ Lee first started out in wrestling. There's I a photo. Yeah. There's oh, a photo that's... online. It's her and there's a, a Lita autograph signing. Yeah. And she's up there and she's the happiest Happiest girl in the world. She's crying, yeah. you know. And they, and they made, remember was, the cartoon that went around. Monster? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Punk used to be an item in real life. And, and, and AJ's banging Punk in the cartoon 
one side shows her crying, getting leaves autograph and saying, "I want to be just like you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's on right. top of punk humping him and saying, "Now I've done everything you've done," or something like that. Right, it's, right, it's right. Fucking funny, but it was but, fucked up. But so she goes out and she's, you know, she's living the dream, right? Her dream to be a professional wrestler, to make it to WWE, to be, be a champ, big name yeah. in WWE as far as the divas. She held the division. record long right. title reign. Yeah. All of a sudden, she gets married to CM Punk, a guy who hates WWE, can't. Tandem, right? Don't think for one second that that doesn't rub off on you hearing your husband over and over and over talk about how much WWE and the politics and everything else. And then, you know, she winds up retiring. I just, I think that CM Punk had a little bit to do with that. I mean, AJ's got her own life. Yeah. But living with CM Punk full time when you're not on the road. It's going to rub off on you a little bit. Yeah, like, let's not say he's influencing her. You need to hate him, too. But no. it's got to be awkward living in the same house, like you said, being <laughs> right. married to a guy that was fired on his wedding day by this company. That you're dude. working for the same company. You're getting paid by the company that well, basically fucked him over. And don't think that you know. didn't piss AG, AJ Lee off a little bit. Her I mean, too. sure, yeah. you're trying to screw over CM Punk, but yeah, it's her wedding, too. Yeah. And it's fired both. my husband on his wedding day? That's it's, screwed up. I, 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 I get I gotta it. I gotta work hard for you, you know? I, I, I get it. They fire CM Punk on his wedding day, or he gets his... Uh, he was already gone. They, but they give him his, for, his yeah, termination his papers yeah, yeah, yeah. on his wedding day, but there's, no another, there's another person in that wedding yes. that is still under contract with you. It that still, still is works there. For you and every works week. Hard too, yeah. Don't think that's not gonna piss her off just a little bit, too, on their wedding day, you know, so sure. And if you, you look at it from over. the WWE side of things, the loss of AJ Lee, there, I mean, it's not a big deal because the Divas not division, right? Because the Divas division doesn't mean jack shit. But as far as within that Divas world, she was the best. She I mean, you argue Natalia or AJ Lee is the, the best Bellas. worker. No, I'm talking about worker. Oh, okay, worker. She's yeah. considered either the best or one of the best. Yeah, she was yeah, the yeah. hottest, Absolutely. obviously, in my right. opinion, at least. Yeah. She was the best on the mic by far compared to any of them. So she was like Good. the best performer right. that had a vagina in the entire, except for maybe <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie's yeah. an awesome heel. Right, right, but right, she right. was the best active wrestling you know, diva in the company. Absolutely. And, so that's a big loss in that so regard. So she's, uh, she's gone. Two other stories I want to mention because people in the chat room brought it up. Earlier today at the, uh, the Upfront, uh, yes, they do it every one. year. Uh, USA Network all and Spike TV yeah, and yeah. All, all the networks are out uh, there. This one caught me by by surprise, yeah, man. Yeah, I know um, SmackDown. Yeah, you know, I didn't know how much longer um, SmackDown's contract was or WWE's they contract. They just signed a new one to go on Thursday. But it was only like a two-year deal with the Sci-Fi Network. I remember it was only a two- or three-year deal, um, and... and you know, did they sign a new contract when they switched from Friday to Thursday, or was that just a? Uh, no, I think that was just a switch. Okay. Um, that was in the they, middle of the contract. They just in switched the middle nights. of the contract okay. just switched nights. But come this January, right in January, yeah. uh, I mean, WWE SmackDown yeah. is moving uh, away from Sci-Fi. Sci-Fi never made sense. Sci-Fi. It only made sense in Smackdown. the sense that it was such. It was a cable company with. Full na- na- national clearance, so everybody's got sci-fi. Right, right. Now it's not the kind of program because when they first started, it was the ECW show on sci-fi. Right. And they had the vampire character that they were trying to do. Like they were trying to make it a sci-fi kind trying of wrestling to show. Incorporate in that, a way that with in ECW, there, right. and then the ECW. Long story short, SmackDown became part of it when they, you know, left. Uh, what was it? UPN or whatever the fuck they were on. What was? What were they on? Uh they. It was Sci-Fi USA Spike. Mike? What was no, Raw used before to be sci-fi? It. it was on UPN. Was it UPN? When they first started out, it was UPN. But uh, all right, either way, they moved. My sci-fi, something. My, my, my network or whatever. Something, yeah, something yeah, that, that was yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah, channel, yeah. I think. But, but, uh, but anyway. Either way, yeah, the, the fact that they're moving to the USA Network, that's the first time ever that I can think of where Raw and SmackDown will be on the same station. Yeah, they so yeah. have synergy where boy USA loves them. Yeah, so WWE. Yeah, don't a lot they? of people don't like it. Like, oh, it's good WWE. ratings, but yeah. it's a shitty demographic for advertisers. It's young, you know, the young audience. That right, right. The advertisers like the audience our age. You know, the twenty somethings, the late teens, the early thirties, whatever. Because those are the people that spend money, or right. the rich older people. I think you can do a lot more cross promotion for a cheaper price if you're advertising. Okay, if, if WWE's advertising, yeah. you know, the SmackDown main event on Sci-Fi, they've got to pay big money to advertise a different network. They're on the same uh, 
Viacom, you know, they're all under the Viacom umbrella, but they are different networks and different companies. So, yeah, right. I'm sure there's some kind of something, but it wasn't that hard to do it. But now that they're on the exact same network, and, you know, they're still under the Viacom thing, but they're both with the same cable company. Right. So there probably right. will be more promotion back and forth. A lot of cross-promotion um, for, for Raw and SmackDown on the USA and Network. It'll makes be it easy. It's going to be Thursday Thursdays, still. Thursdays, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, okay. 8 to 10 Eastern Time on Thursday. It's not going to happen until January of 2016, but uh, WWE sent out a, uh, a press release today about it, and uh, so SmackDown on Thursday, they should make it live, but a lot, and that's what everybody's saying, make SmackDown live, what you guys don't understand is to do a live broadcast every week, every single week when they do Monday Night Raw live, you're talking about a million dollars. To produce a live yeah. show, I can't remember the exact figure. I don't I know. say like eight hundred thousand. It's a lot a of million. money. Yeah, and the and the amount of it's not. Like, I mean, it's been proven over the years that tape versus live really doesn't have any bearing on ratings. Like, it, it doesn't. Spoilers it really will not doesn't. stop somebody from watching if they want to watch, and they won't get you to watch if you don't want to watch. Although I mean. when when I watch. I love the fact that Raw is live, man, because you don't know what's yeah. going to happen. You don't, and, and there's no but time for editing, and like, you've got the eight second delay. Getting, but that's it. That's you getting trained over the years to enjoy right. it for that reason. Like it's that, that's because there was the longest stretch of time, not just the Attitude Era, but a little bit before the Attitude Era, and certainly some after the Attitude Era. It's died down, but there was always that. The big shit happens on Raw. Yeah. Right? If they're going to do something yeah. big, it's going to be on Raw. Yeah. And for the longest time, there was something unexpected every week on Raw. Yeah. Not, a, not necessarily a surprise every time, but something where you're like, God damn, that was awesome. I can't believe it. Just, and you're watching it live, so it, it feels cooler. And then after years and years and years, you get trained to expect it, and, and right. that's why you tune in because it's yeah. live. Yeah. But they've stopped yeah. doing... They've stopped making it must-see programming for the well, longest fucking time. That's so part of the could, reason. If they could tape it, it would be the same watching experience. Nothing too right, great right. is going to happen whether they tape it or not. A lot of people, the casual fan doesn't know if it's live or no. taped. You know what I mean? I remember when I found out. That's why was, TNA is yeah. doing tape shows now. But, you know, they save so much they money. They save a ton, but, but they tape ton of money. months worth of shows in advance. Yes, they don't know about that. I don't that's know about going much. that no, deep, what right? somebody gets injured or... But tight, they you know. save so much money by taping that far in advance. I mean, all they've got to do is set up one time. One time, they've got all their production, everything set up. They don't have to rent the building more and than you once. And you, know, you do yeah. four to eight weeks of television. You don't have to fly talents back and forth right. more than once. Yeah, everybody's there. Every cost is one time, and then you take months worth of shit. It's, a tra like you said, travel and, and the, the, Hotels, the flight expenses and everything production, else. production, the building it's, rent. The, it's yeah. so much easier to do tape shows, but... That leads to, you know, if you're taping that far in advance, yeah. do people care? Well, yeah, that, you know? that and, like, if you're, if you're hell-bent on going, like, this is a small example, but if you're hell-bent on going this direction, and after one or two weeks of airing on TV, it's clear that nobody likes it. Right, Too right. late, you've already got six more weeks of going this way taped, so even though they hate it, well, you got four nothing, more weeks Nothing left. you can do. So you got to do it. this way now because right. we've already got, you know, we're right. taped way right. up there, you know. And then uh, one last thing. By the way, uh, WrestleMania 33, it looks like it's going to be in Minnesota, Minneapolis. It's looking that way. Yeah, All right. It's the leader. Uh, Dallas next year, obviously. Uh, SmackDown's Arlington. being taped tonight. Yeah, Arlington. Yeah. SmackDown's being taped tonight at the American Airlines Center, I believe. That's Dallas. In, uh, in Dallas, Texas. I think it's a two-hour delay in Dallas. I want to say two hours. It's, it's at least one. Yeah, I think it's two. I think it's two. Uh, so this, it's going to be kind of a late night for uh, SmackDown Sports. It's going to be after midnight for you guys on the East Coast. The last thing I want to talk about, and then we'll get into, uh, my, we'll get the plugs out of the way. We'll get into uh, Monday Night Raw from last night. <laughs> do the uh, do the high points, the you low force points. Force yourself to say it that way. You Monday normally, Night Raw. Yeah, normally you get into it because you're trailing <laughs> off your sentence, like I was just doing there. But no, that time you stop mid sentence and say blah 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 blah, blah and then we're going to get to. Monday Night Raw. <laughs> <coughs> the fuck was that? What did you think? <coughs> you and I talked about it. So, Justin Roberts, former WWE announcer, yes. comes out. Buddy. My old buddy, yeah. man. I haven't talked to him in a long, long time. I want to talk about the Rampage thing, too. For um, the Raw. Yeah, 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 no yeah. doubt. One hour delay. Uh, uh, Dallas, Is that it? by the okay. way. Thanks to uh, Shop Tall Man. And hey, to the guy in the chat room from the, from the UK. Did you get your T-shirt yet, man? I sent it out last Friday, Thursday or Friday. It should be there. If it's not there today, it better be there tomorrow. If not, shoot me an email. But I think the guy, uh, 
Taz? Is it Taz? Is there a Taz in the chat room? It's a Taz Maniac or something. Like Owie. That. That's him right there. Owie Taz UK in the oh, uh, chat. Uh, hopefully you got your t-shirt, man. Otherwise, it should be there tomorrow at the latest, man. If not, send me an email. But uh, we got that out for you. I know you've been bugging me. Begging me. Bugging you. Not bugging me. And I emailed the guy. Yeah. No excuses. No excuses at all. You've been bugging him, not giving me a shirt on time. I have no excuses for uh, not, not yet, bro. It's been a bank holiday. Oh, oh it's a it's a holiday. Well, well, hopefully tomorrow, man, it should be there. But uh, no excuses for that. Took way too long, and uh, but we got it out to you. Um, so Justin Roberts writes this blog, right, about uh, Connor Mahalik. 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 And he basically listen. I didn't read the entire blog from top to bottom, um, but the gist of it was that WWE was trying exactly to what we capitalize yeah. off that with some positive media attention. And yeah. let's be honest, everybody jumps all over Justin Roberts, but he's right. He's well, we he's exactly right. talked about it here the the whole the whole idea, and you hadn't remembered the origin of it, but Ultimate Warrior during his acceptance speech for the Hall of Fame last year said that he wants to start a new tradition at the Hall of Fame each year where WWE honors and inducts somebody that isn't famous, basically. Right. That's paraphrasing, but like basically somebody that isn't being inducted because we can put them on a poster and people are like, oh cool, I want to see that person's induct Like somebody, like a camera guy that's worked there for 20 years and Bust his ass, not, you know, from morning till night. Right. Uh, a director of whatever, lighting, or, you know, those kind of people. Right, right. Not somebody that is only being inducted because we can get promotion at it, we can promote it and look good, you know, and this and that. Like the right. Arnold Schwarzenegger or Drew Carey or these kind of people. Mm -hmm. And then the very first inductee was one of the sick kids that kind of got over because he was super cute and in all these videos leading up to WrestleMania last year. So it was the exact opposite of the idea behind the award, honoring some unknown person. They honored a non-wrestler, yes, but they only honored this per specific person because it would be such great publicity. You know what I mean? You know what else? Not I, the only reason, I think, but I think that's a very convenient... It know. was the first year of the award, number one, the very which first one. you want to kick it off with a bang. Yeah. Uh, that, that's number one. An example of somebody that this word, this award's about. And no, number two is yeah. I mean, listen, they inducted the uh, the the kid. Um, for, it was a it was a, a heartfelt. It was very, it was a warming very. moment, no doubt about it, man. But it was also for some publicity. Now WWE would never admit that, and no. they issued a statement, this, that, and the other thing, saying that. It's not about that. It's about Connor. It wasn't all Connor of that. Did. I'll give him that. It wasn't and all about that, but it was a large part it of it. Was, was yeah, it was for look publicity? At the stories we can get. And out of you know, the father came out and said, "Listen, let's remember Connor for you know the way that Justin Roberts treated him backstage." To me, that was basically like the father's subtle way. I know you don't agree with this, but that was the father, father's subtle way. He put up photos of Justin Roberts backstage. Hugging Connor yeah. and giving the thumbs up and whatnot. That was the father's subtle way of saying, remember this, Justin? That whole blog you wrote, but remember this? <laughs> and here's backstage photos of me. And that's kind of a subtle, I don't know, it was a subtle way of saying, even though you wrote that blog. And granted, Do you know Justin, what Justin's blog was about? Even Justin's blog, yeah, absolutely. Even Justin's blog said that, that he respected what WWE did. He didn't trash it. He didn't no, completely he trash. He was basically saying Connor's. He put Connor over like a man. As an ago. awesome kid. So how does awesome the pictures kid. like remember this? What does that even mean? I no, I, 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 when the I thought it was more the, like a shot at WWE by the father. Like, hey, you guys are so against what this guy said. But all I care about was that he was nice to my son. That's and true. Gave him the time of day when he was, you know, he was. I'll backtrack. Yeah. I'll backtrack. All right. All right. You're you're right. Oh, you're right. Uh, you know, I got. Yeah. Uh, but but anyways, so that's that's the whole Justin Roberts. Now. Yes. We'll move on to Raw. Rampage, real quick. Rampage. Yeah, yeah. Um, now listen. So Bellator went and filed an injunction. Today. Yeah, preliminary injunction. No, and they didn't file it today. They filed it a while ago, but the, the, the result came out today. Does that prevent Rampage from fighting? So the fight's he's, off. He's not fighting anymore. Fight's yeah. off. That poor card has been destroyed, man. Did he not know that this was a possibility? What was going to happen? Obviously, he didn't, and obviously the UFC didn't, because they wouldn't have signed him if they thought there was going to be a problem in obviously having him fight. They wouldn't sign him if he can't but fight. It, it's... 
so he obviously thought that because the it's, it's a whole involved thing. We've kind of over the story. Go listen to one of the archives. But the long and short of it is, they didn't live up to what they promised in the contract. They were supposed to show them pay per view numbers. They were supposed to do this, that, the other fucking thing. Rampage claims they didn't. So he thinks he's been his contract has been breached. So he's free to sign with UFC. UFC obviously had their legal team look over it. They agreed, signed them, made the announcement, booked them for a show, started promoting it already. And then the bell tour said, no, 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 we got a contract with this fucking guy. We didn't break the the, 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 the agreement. That's, that's what I'm saying, though. So then they filed the injunction, and it came out, and then the judge ruled in their favor and said, no, this you file, you file the injunction. You, you file the injunction, right? And yeah. as long as you've got just a little bit of proof, yeah. a little bit of proof that, listen, there's contract issues, and we need to get this resolved. Yeah. Even if you've got a tiny little bit of proof that... You know, contracts are involved. Yeah. The injunction's going to be granted. Of course. And that's what happened. Yeah. So, I don't understand why di- why UFC would go ahead and promote this and have Rampage. Well, Rampage thought, was on the Fight thought, special. They thought that there was a clear breach, so he would legally be allowed to do that. But, I think I think a large part of it, nobody wants to submit it, because they would think UFC would be totally professional. And they are, and they would be. But, I think there's also a chance that they thought Bellator wouldn't even do anything about it. Kind of like maybe that's what it was. Maybe like kind of like. But he's, he's their leaving, biggest he, star. I know, but if he's if he's like, I'm not fighting for you guys. Fuck you, I'm leaving. Well, they would be like, well, that sucks, you know. But it's not like, oh, well, we can stop him from coming to UFC, so he'll have to come fight for us because he'll Bellat- be like, Bellator- fuck you, I'm not fighting for anybody. Then you know, Bellator is competition for UFC, right? It's of the second biggest promotion, yes. right, behind UFC. So, and it's their biggest star, and they didn't part on the best of terms. No. So. With that being said, and Rampage Bella, is trash today too. He posted. Right, I, I yeah. saw the photo on Instagram. Yeah. But they didn't part on the best of terms, so you know. I mean, just me being an outsider, I know that Bellator's pissed off at Rampage, and they are going to do everything possible to prevent him from yeah. fighting for UFC. Listen, the only UFC should have seen this. Of course, they should have seen it. That's why, obviously, something <coughs> when they looked over it, their legal team looked over. It. There was obviously something there that was enough of a, like, oh, this is definitely a breach that they're like, all right, even if they try and stop us, we got the legal grounds to do what we're doing right now. Obviously, they didn't look over good enough, or they were just wrong, which is kind of curious. How could they have, obviously, it seems with, so obvious, how with, could they have... With contracts, though, an injunction is going to be yeah. granted, because they need more time to look, to look over the contracts yeah. and look over everything. And exactly, because a lot of the breach, the, the, the breach that he's claiming, it, it's kind of... Unless I'm not, unless I'm mistaken, it's kind of like how can he prove what he's saying? You know what I mean? Like yeah, kind of like word yeah. against word. Whereas if it was something where there'd be a paper trail and you could prove it was like, look at this document. We did show him this file right. paper on this date on this time. You know, whatever he signed for. Here it is. Oh, all right. Well, then he's fucking wrong. You're right. Case uh. is dismissed. But I think it's more of a rampage is claiming something that he can't prove. Right. With documentation. Right, right, right. So it's kind of like he's got to prove. But yeah. obviously, in the meantime, they're gonna prevent, freeze him. You know, from fighting for another company until they resolve the contract that he has outstanding with this company. Was so that the main event um, at the pay-per-view or the, the co-main event? The main event was originally going to be T.J. Dillashaw versus Hannah Brown 2. Right. Dillashaw gets injured, that fight scraps. And then it becomes Demetrius Johnson versus Kiori, who, who, Kiori Horiguchi. Is as the, the main as event? the main event. Really? The co-main event, was because it's in Montreal, is going to be Rory McDonald, the, yeah, the new yeah, Canadian no GSP doubt. guy, no doubt. against Hector Lombard. Hector Lombard failed a drug, uh, Lombard failed yeah. drug test in his last fight, so that oh, fight no. got canceled. For real? Lawler's, or McDonald's now fighting Robbie Lawler for the title underneath Conor McGregor. I like that better. I like that better. All but right. For the Montreal fans okay. that bought tickets, there's shit. Yeah. We lost yeah, yeah, yeah. Dillashaw and Brown. We lost Rory McDonald. Yeah. And uh, Hector Lombard, now they just lost Rampage. Now they lost Rampage. And, uh, I heard uh, so Benson, Benson Henderson Benson offered to step up. Yeah, he offered to step up and fight a welterweight fight. He's normally a lightweight guy. Yeah. But in his last fight, he choked out Brandon Thatch, this big fucking giant welterweight that was killing people. So right. he, he, he offered to fight anybody that's willing to step up, and then it was George Jorge Masvidal, the guy that Al Ike went to beat the other night and threw a fit. Oh, God, yeah. Afterwards on the yeah. bike, the guy that should have won the fight that stormed out of the cage because he got screwed, he, he offered to step up. Are you booing me? Are you, are you oh, motherfuckers yeah, booing me? No, that was Al Ike. Yeah, the other guy, Jorge yeah, yeah. 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 Masvidal, offered right. to fight Benson Henderson okay. and accept his challenge. Now, right. that's not signed or nothing. That's just talk on Twitter. Boy, so that so whole card is They got Michael Bisping versus C.B. Dalloway, Demetrius Johnson versus Kiora Horiguchi, and that's pretty much it. All the way in Bisping will be all right. But that was going to be like the fifth biggest fight at, with Rampage, Dillashaw, Burrell, Ray right, McDonald, yeah. Lombard, and Bisping. Well, that's a pay-per-view.
pay-per-view, too. It's not even a fight night. I no. mean, that's, that's a got, pay-per-view. That's the first time they've gone to Canada in a long time, so the Canadian yeah. fans are passionate in a minute. They're like, what the fuck? Yeah, man? that sucks. We got man. screwed. That sucks. You know, All right. Let's get these plugs out of the way. We'll get into a Monday Night Raw from last night. Bro. Also, in our numero dos, we're going to be taking your live phone calls, and we're going to do rapid fire. It's coming back this week. Last week, we didn't have enough time for it, but we'll do live phone calls and rapid fire. Uh, Jackie's not happy. Rusev, uh, Lana, not on Raw last night. By the way, Rusev, Lana, Bray Wyatt. Stephanie McMahon, Triple, Triple H. H, all not on Raw last yeah, night. Yeah, there was a man. lot of talent missing. Was right? Dean Ambrose on at one point? I think. So. I think Ambrose was on. I think yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all right, right uh, so here we go. Get in the Raw, real yes, quick. Do you know that the, the Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather fights on May second? Ah, uh, it's coming up so quick. It's only a couple weeks away. Do you yeah. know they're not doing an HBO twenty four seven? I know. We were talking about this last access. night. They're not going to do any kind of multi part countdown special for the biggest fight of all time. The reason being that they're telling the public is that this fight sells itself. We don't need that to sell the fight. Mm -hmm. No shit, you don't need it to sell the fight, but it would make the people that's ordering the fight a lot more excited for it right. if they could see the build-up to this. You know what I mean? You're a lot yeah. more emotionally yeah. invested when you watch those things. Yeah. Plus, it would have drawn in a lot of extra visitors. I know. But it's I think great. it's because it's, it's HBO Versus has one Showtime. guy, Showtime has yeah. the other guy. Showtime has Mayweather, HBO has Pacquiao. Kind of. And they just, oh, well, we want right. the countdown. No, we want the countdown. You know. That was wrong. Uh, uh... Rygout in the uh, chat. You're right. Uh, Bray Wyatt did cut a, uh, a promo. Yes, he did. Uh, from backstage. Backstage, backstage promo one. last night on uh, Raw. Yeah, it was real quick. Yeah, but, he uh, wasn't in the ring at any point, right? He never came out uh, before the so. live. Yeah. Well, he's got the ankle injury, so maybe they're giving him. Yeah, yeah, the just did something backstage. Yeah. It sounded like he was calling somebody out last night. Clearly, he clearly was calling was. somebody out. Yeah. Uh, but it was similar to the way that he called the Undertaker out, right? Cool. Where, yeah, yeah the f the first week. He didn't know what he was talking about. And then the second week, he brought up a casket. And the third week, he brought up, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was week after yeah, week. Not, not, not in that order. But by the last promo, you knew, all right, he's calling out The Undertaker. Yeah. And then that's... It started off, you know, he's talking about somebody, but who is right. it? And that's kind of what last night was, in my opinion. I agree with you. Yeah, last night he was who talking, he about talking about somebody. He's clearly right. singling somebody out, but who is it? And I think next week, we'll get another we'll hint. Slowly find out more. And more another more. hint. Yeah. And then we'll find yeah, out who he's, who he's going to face. I don't know, man. Um, what's next for uh, Cena after uh, they do the rematch the at, at Extreme Rules? They're gonna do that at Extreme Rules, but after that, I don't know who's next for him. I, I would don't know, but they've already done Cena and Bray. Uh, he might he might be doing the mid card circuit with that U.S. belt, trying to get it over. He might do the you know Cena might do like the Ambroses, the Zigglers, the somebody in the chat room said maybe Roman if they want to put him in the main event. You know, go for the Roman Reigns does make sense because yeah. now you got Seth Rollins tied up with Orton for the title. Right. So right. Reigns needs something to do, and Reigns and Bray would be a perfect thing. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be good, no doubt. All right, uh, so let's get these plugs out of the way, and then we'll get into a Monday Night Raw from last night. We got about 10 or 15 minutes before we got to go to the break. Let's do the high points, low points, Monday Night Raw, and then in our numero dos, finish up Raw, your live phone calls, and Rapid Fire as well, the official website, home of WZR TV Tuesdays, WZRonline.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZRArmy. Go to YouTube.com slash WZRArchive. We're on Twitter as well. All you got to do is go to WZRonline.com, top navigation bar, social media tab. It's got a drop-down menu. It's got all the links to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, WZRonline.com, the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays, live chat room, on and in progress, Absolutely. as always. WZRonline.com slash chat. WZRonline.com slash chat. Eyes open. Uh, and Good scene. to go. Yeah. End scene. There it is. Uh, a lot of people in the chat room. Get in there. WZRonline.com slash chat. Monday Night Raw. What do you think, man? From last night. You yeah. know. Top to bottom. Letter it was, grade. It wasn't a terrible letter grade. School letter grade. Um... C plus or a B minus? C plus. C plus. I'm going to go C plus as well. I might change to a B minus as we go through it. Cause there's That's I'm right. I'm starting to remember a couple of cool things. All right. No, no Heyman. Heyman. No Heyman. Yeah. Yeah. Most of what we're trying to yeah. 
Right. Both of us were trying to think of good things that happened in Raw. Immediately <laughs> what the first was the name that comes to mind, Paul Heyman. <laughs> what did he do? You and I both, yeah. man. <laughs> All right, so here we go. The uh, the opening segment, um, they're setting up the main event for uh, yeah. Extreme Rules coming up in a couple well, we of weeks. We shoot straight to the commentary table, right? And we see that it's Byron Sachs. Byron and... and uh, oh! Yeah. Albert. All right, so they open they up Raw. Right out of the gate. They open up Raw, right? And Byron Sachs, then he goes... Welcome everyone to Monday Night Raw, and then there's a long. It was pause. worse. It was almost like, "Welcome everybody to Monday Night Raw." We're, and then he almost like stopped in mid word because <laughs> I started stopped. yelling at him, and he's like waiting to let him finish yelling at him, and then he got to talk. You know, so it's this big I, dead silence. I think he started before the pyro went off. I think the pyro was supposed that to go it. off. And he clearly did something that Vince didn't like. <laughs> he was getting his what? first tongue lashing of the night. And somebody was in his ear set, and I can only imagine, and I'm guessing that it was Vince, Gotta be Vince. backstage saying, What are you doing? Stop! Yeah, Shut up! The pyro, Stop! Yeah. The pyro! Dude, right off the bat. And then, when he did start talking Which again... Which is stupid, because I think they count you well, down. Three, two, one, go. And right. then you start talking. Right. JR would always say Kevin Dunn would tell him in his ears, all right, we're coming to an all-camera in three. Two, right. Two, right. Right, right, right. But then, when he comes back, for like the first minute or so, the guy's voice was shaky. Yeah. And maybe that's because he's nervous. It's Monday Night Raw. But I'm thinking it's because somebody was in that poor dude's headset saying, what the fuck They were are really you putting him to the test, too. Cause like they, they were, went, man. They went straight to the on-cameras with him. Right. About three times in the first ten minutes. There was a shot of the announcers and them looking straight to the camera and talking. Right. They don't do that that often when it's the normal, you know, Michael Cole-led team out there. Yeah, and not only that. Once in a while, but... but <coughs> you had... I mean, JBL was just busting on him hard yeah. throughout the night. You got the initiation him. thing, yeah. <coughs> you know, see him... It's, it's like a frat house, man. It's you know what I mean? You gotta kids. drink so much yeah. milk or water or whatever, <laughs> milk? you know? What frat house were you in? I, they do <laughs> stupid initiation things. Mm-hmm. They just had a guy... He had to Hazy. drink like yeah. 18 gallons of water or something like Or 18 gallons Ooh, of milk where? or something like that. Around here, the guy died. Oh, in a he frat drank, thing? He drank so much juice or milk or water or <laughs> something like that and passed away man um all right so we got the big show out there you got seth rollins out there the whole Kane, the whole click right yeah. they're out there and uh next to the trophy he's got the trophy time. out yeah. there right and uh rollins <laughs> rollins was funny when he brought up uh Kane at wrestlemania well, he was talking like, about they're talking about how like the authority the, always wins big show proves he's a real giant one andre i came out the world champion and Kane. Kane, Kane, you uh, you were there. Who <laughs> would you do? Yeah. You were there. <laughs> you were there too. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <coughs> right. So he says, um, Kane, you were there too. <laughs> also brought up that uh, Triple H, Stephanie were uh, on vacation. Yes. Somewhere down south. Somewhere with no private, internet, no phone. private island. Yeah, they couldn't be contacted. Something, something like Could that. Be reached. So uh, he says, uh, what they they uh, Orton, he brags a lot Orton about being entitled, yeah, being a champion. And Orton comes out. Orton comes out and he says uh, he wants. Uh, he never lost. He beat was Rollins it? at WrestleMania. He yeah. beat Rollins at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, With the best RKO of his career, he even said. It was. Right, right. So he is the guy that deserves the title shot. He I be beat the you contender, yeah. at WrestleMania. Why Why don't I get the title shot? Right. right. And, and, and this leads to Kane, contender. the director of operations in the ring, right. who was, you were there too. Right. He starts <laughs> laying down the law because no Triple H to Stephanie. He's in charge. He's in charge tonight. So he decides that there's going to be a triple threat match tonight. Tonight on Raw, in the main event, to determine the new number one contender to Seth Rollins, the winner will face Seth Rollins at Extreme Rules. Right. Uh, and I don't know if he announced it here, but if you want, I got the three names. It's going to be Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, and Ryback. Right. And Correct. PR. And that's going to headline Raw tonight. The winner. And goes each on of those guys concept. will be in individual matches before the Triple Threat. Match. Throughout the night, exactly. Yes. And the first exactly. one's right now: Randy Orton versus right me. Now. Randy Orton. Yeah, versus so Randy Orton defeated uh, Kane. Uh, this ended in a disqualification, right? Orton yes. went for an RKO, and uh, Kane rolled out of the ring. J&J secured, didn't they? Like, they all jumped him or something. Some shit. Yeah, yeah. We had, uh, oh, they did. They referenced uh, yeah. AJ Lee's That was uh, actually what I was talking about. They were very nice about it. Like, they were. Yeah, they were. There was no subtle fuck you bitch, you know. Well, like, it wasn't. Something like that. Right, right. He, uh, JBL actually talked about the uh, thank you... AJ hashtag yes. uh, that that's going on on Twitter. Uh, Brad Maddox is back, right? 
He uh, was back. Technically, backstage. I mean, he wasn't on mic. We didn't hear a word he said. No, he consoled Kane he backstage. He was talking to Kane for like two seconds, and then he walked out, and then interrupted. Right. Uh, who was it? Rollins bitching and complaining. Yeah, Rollins came in and yeah. uh, basically scolded him and, and said, Threatened you know, him, said, you know, you might be in charge tonight, but I'm going to tell on you, you know, when you're right. Stephanie comes you're back. Right. Uh, speaking of Seth Rollins, how about Neville again on Monday Night Raw? Um, Second match is, against the world champ. Dude, take it from a Ring of Honor mark. Like, uh, it just reminds, it reminded me of an indie match. I don't know, Seth Rollins is... Tyler Black back, versus Pac. Back whatever. in the Tyler Black days. was No, Neville wasn't Pac, was yeah. he? Neville was Pac. I remember asking the chat one week if it was who, who what his name was, and they said Neville? Pac. Is All it? capital letters. I don't, see, I haven't seen much. Of, I've, I've heard about, I've heard about... I've heard all about Pac. I've just never seen yeah, any of his work. Pretty but sure it's Pac. That was him on the indie scene. Rygal would know in the Rygal just said yes. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I haven't seen much. I've heard about him, but no doubt. That's Neville. All right, no doubt. But it just reminded me of, like, two indie guys. You've got a guy in developmental, NXT, coming up, being called up. And it looks like, I mean, clearly they're going to keep him on the main roster now uh, with the name change in last week, this week. Not only that, but here's the deal. You know, I put it up on Twitter last night. Everybody says, all right, got the Ascension. They buried them. Somebody yeah. buried them last night. The uh, primetime players did the prime time comedy. player. God, it was so stupid. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so the Ascension gets called up, and they're just completely jobbed out. Last night, a lot of people were saying, man, Neville gets called up to the main roster. He gets jobbed out. He lost, but listen, the world number one, with help. he's going against yeah. the world champion. That's number one. Number two, they gave him like a 10-minute ten, ten match. It's 11 minutes and change. And they, right. had, they had outside interference. Like, they had J&J Security helping Rollins. So, like, Rollins couldn't even beat him by himself. You know what I mean? So right, it, right, right. He's a legit guy. He went a legit the, contender, he man. with the champ, so, you know, even with help. You know. if, if you're going to bring an NXT guy up, what better way? If you're going to have him lose... Uh, right after you bring him up in, in his second week at on the main roster, yeah. at least have it be against the world heavyweight and champion it's a number one. Match, which shows and a he can really hang with the best right. in the fucking company. Right. He's exactly. on that level. It proves that he belongs in the same category as that, That's the way that you know, you're know you not jobbing yeah. out. If you're going to lose, guy. at least have him lose you know, in that at way. At least have him lose. And WWE is soon going to be like Ring of Honor is going to be running the business. I mean, if you look at it, dude, Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, now right? you guys like. Neville, and then soon Kevin Owens and Finn Balor and, I and Sami Zayn are going to come up. They're talking about bringing Samoa Joe in. He's going to get moved up. You know what I mean? If CM Punk was still around, he'd be in the top. It is it's the like new ring. You know? All <laughs> Ring of Honor guys that's dominating that's the top. That's awesome. I yeah. love it, man. I love it, man. And I the said... Ambrose, you know. I said years ago on here, uh, now, I uh, mean, Jesus, it is years ago, Daniel Bryan, I said, I don't think Daniel Bryan's going to get over in WWE. I said the same thing about Kevin Steen. He's over as Rover down yeah. at NXT. What, what happens on the main roster? Fat, we'll have to wait and see. Daniel Bryan's but too small. I said Daniel Bryan wasn't going to get over in WWE. I remember saying it. I said he doesn't have Nobody to Nobody thought he was getting he over. Just, he, he, when they started the NXT, he was like the joke of the group. Like he right. was the internet darling. So they had right. Michael Cole or who was it? Matt Stryker. Whoever the announcer was. Trashing him on purpose. About right. being an indie riffing. And now look at him. So I was, I was dead, dead wrong. That was a uh, fluke. Yeah. And he got over, though. That was the yes, the no yes thing. Right, right, He right. got lucky as shit and got over, you know. Uh, let's see. We had uh, John Cena defeated Stardust. This is kind of... It's, it's, it's weird seeing John Cena not in the main event. I like yeah. it. I, I like it. Yeah, because he's... But, technically, he is a main event wherever he is, but, so... Look at look at what they're doing with the United States title, where you've got the top guy, yeah. WWE's golden boy, well, right? Vince he's golden doing boy doing the U.S. Open challenges, is right. So he's right. offering anybody a chance to come win this prestigious it, it, U.S. title. It gives people like Stardust last night a chance to shine, man. Not only that, but it adds prestige to the United States well, and the IC title. That's where I was going, Daniel like Bryan. Chan John Cena. Wherever he is, he is a main event. So whatever he's doing is also a main event. So the U.S. title becomes a main event. Exactly. Stardust becomes a main event. Like, even right. if it's only for one night, he's right. in an important match that means something. The title, mm -hmm. because it's on him, means something. That, that's a real old argument you get into where, does the guy make the title? Right. Or does the title, the title make, make the, guy? the guy? Right. I'm a big believer of the guy makes the title. Now, Absolutely. in the old days, it was always the I title agree. makes the guy. If you want to make a guy a star... 
make him your world champion because the title changed so infrequently that right. if somebody held it, it was a big deal. Right, right. Nowadays, the title switches so goddamn much that really the guy makes the title. If it's right. a big name, big star, mm. you put a title on him, all of a sudden that title means something because that guy has it. Big guy, big star. Big star dust. Star dust, yeah. Right. Anyway, Lame by the way, <laughs> by the way, Jacob last night, you've got John Cena and Stardust. And Goldust. Or Golda. He calls Stardust. <laughs> anybody with paint is Goldust. 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 Anybody with a right. suit is Triple H. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so we had uh, Cena, Cena picked up the win here with a... Uh, Although he knows Sting. Huh? He knows Sting. He does know Sting. He does know Sting. So Cena got the uh, the win there. Uh, the Divas match of the night was Naomi and Paige defeated the Bella Twins. Uh, they kept it short. This is bad, too, it man. Was was this good. was no you. You and I were watching together. Was it and you're like, all of that towards the end. There's another botch. There's yeah, another yeah, botch. Yeah, yeah. There's towards another. The and they were screwing up left and right. Yeah, and a lot of it was yeah. just bad timing. You know what I mean? Like, Speaking like of, we just had right there. But yeah, go ahead. Speaking of bad, bad comedy. Bad comedy, dude. And I, I went on Facebook last night and I said the prime time players are dot 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 dot. I got people on my Facebook page. Hilarious. Awesome. That was Talented, funny. That was funny. <laughs> I said, that was funny, man. That was douche chills. Come on, Central, let's show it, man. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. It's so stupid. It was so... Ju- and they They're dressed buried. up like the Ascension. I mean, the Ascension. My God. Yeah. They were over so big down in NXT, right? This is a case of guys in NXT oh. over... Like Rover, second time in a matter of minutes. Yes. But I don't know why I'm using that tonight. But anyway, they come up to the main roster. Vince doesn't like them. And Vince buries them. And granted, that they are a wrong tweet. He wanted to be a legion the, of doom. He wanted it there. They didn't wear paint down in NXT. They didn't have yeah. the fucking shoulder things. I don't think they, they did. Did like, down in NXT? It's not as dramatic, was it? I think it was a different version. Like they had like almost like capes on in NXT, right? Not the big shoulder thing. I thought they had. They that. had something. But either way, that wasn't. Thing. It was just part of their uh, entrance attire. It wasn't their gimmick. Was their oh, they're the guys with spikes things on their shoulder, you know? Right, right. So the, the WWE Vince, whoever decided they're going to be our new. Legion of Doom, and that was what killed him because you're never going to be as good as the original. So why right. try? Right, be something right. different. You know? Yeah, it just uh, they've been completely buried. And, man, and the way they buried. debuted them with the commentators mocking them, like they're not even as close to as good as Legion right. of Doom. Right, they're not right. even in the same ballpark. This and that. Like, why would you even? They just got buried right from the yeah. beginning, man. They just got Convince buried. Convince everybody you know? they're not as good as these old teams from the old days. You know? All right, it's uh, nine o'clock Eastern time. We have got to take a, a quick commercial break. We're going to come back on the flip side. We're going to finish up a Monday Night Raw from last night. We're also going to be taking your live phone calls. Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. Oh, geez. No Rusev, no Lana on Raw last night. So, we need to talk about that. Get to our live chat room, wzronline.com slash chat, wzronline.com slash chat. Get in there. Lots and lots of people in there, as always, tonight. Like I said, we're coming back in our numero dos, your live phone calls, rapid fire, and finishing up Monday Night Raw from last night. You are listening to WZR-TV Tuesdays with Matt Boone. Me. Ryan Clark. Yeah. We'll be back. Yes. Right after this. Indeed. Well, during the, right. uh, the commercial break, so that's a good oh. thing. We are back for our numero dos. Roll them sleeves up. <coughs> Get a burp out. Let's get it going. All right. We need to finish up Monday Night Raw from last night. Then we're going to open it up. It's all about you guys for the rest of the show. It's going to be rapid fire and your live phone calls. We'll give out the phone number here in just a couple of minutes for you guys to give us a call live on air. Speaking of live, get to our live chat room, wzronline.com. Slash chat, wzronline.com. Slash chat. Get in there, and uh, we'll be taking your questions out of the chat room, questions on the phone lines, and your rapid-fire questions as well. So, back to Monday Night Raw. Get right back into it. We left off with Ryback and Luke Harper. This is part of the deal where all three guys in the main event, they've got to be in singles matches tonight. He's a big fan of Luke Harper. Calls him Bray Wyatt. He thinks thinks Luke is is Bray. But, uh, so Luke Harper... um, no, Ryback. Ryback got the pin they over it quick. Yeah, Harper. Yeah, they kept the shell it shock at the one, two, three. It was pretty quick. Yeah, very quick. Then, Jesus, man, you had Renee Young, who, uh, speaking Looks of Dean Ambrose, yeah. man, my God, 
Renee Young is... I, I'm not a big fan of the new hairdo. She looks uh, hot the other way, but she yeah, still looks good as yeah, shit. Yeah, she is hot, yeah. man. And you've come around, you've come around on Renee Young, I've always who liked you've Renee. always liked, and, um... Page is Page the other I one. Page I came around on. I never liked came around on. Yeah, everybody was talking about how Paige this NXT chick was. She's a cool, spunky chick, too, I always thought, I don't like pale, I like tan. Yeah. And, uh, she was extremely pale, you know, and I didn't like right. the lip ring and all that crap, but right. she grows on you, man. My yeah. God. When you, watch, hot, when you watch Total Divas, she seems like a cool not only a hot chick, but yeah. like a real cool chick. Yeah, like man. a real cool chick. Which makes her hotter. Right, you know? right, right, right. Um, all right, we had... Uh, so, the New Day, right? New Day's backstage. Talk about death and taxes and everything else. Yeah. Um, but it was it was New Day. You know what I mean? It's like the primetime players in New Day are two groups. What was the, the phrase that, that, that he said? Boy, or... Do, what, what the fuck was it? Big E said something we kept mocking him afterwards. Boy, remember. or little boy, or... Oh, uh, little, you what? little, oh, man. She rhymed like Humpty Dumpty, you little booty doody, or yeah, what the hell was it? it was so corny, it was dude. Stupid. But anyway, um, so. He it, got it an awesome just, promo on Twitter, Biggie, last week. He did, he did. Uh, I clap for the fan that comes above. I clap for the day I wake up. I clap for the, like, the. Right, 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 right. thing and made, like, a, like a hard times kind of promo out of it. Right, 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 right. Oh shit! What? You are right. R three R in the chat room. Can you take over real quick while I go do that? Oh, okay. I did yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll leave you. We left off with uh, Lucha Dragon. Yes. Yeah. Well, like he said, the new day. Uh, they were already mocked by the primetime players early in the evening in a pre-tape segment. Here we go back to the ring for tag team action. This match was kept relatively short as well as it lasted three minutes. Uh, it was the second Raw appearance of the Lucha Dragons. Callisto and Sin Cara. Uh, Callisto continues to impress uh, not only those in the audience and watching on TV, but uh, a lot of executive backstage are also pretty impressed with his work. He's very, obviously very athletic. He's got a very crowd-pleasing style, like the old cruiserweights in WCW. I mean, he just flies all over the place. So, uh, But, uh, yeah, the Lucha Dragons got the win in this one. Uh, fans were all over the New Day with New Day Sucks chance. There's a tune of a little clapping. Uh, so that killed that one, and then from there we went back to the ring for singles competition, and the final of the uh, three guys in the main event and their singles matches, uh, the only guy left is Roman Reigns, so of course he has the longest match of the three, and against possibly the worst opponent, because it's Roman Reigns' big show for the 20th time in a 10 plus minute match, um, Roman Reigns did all of his usual stuff, you know, the uh, the big jumping kick to the on the apron, the, the spear, the Superman punch, this and that, and uh, pretty much in the end, Roman Reigns picked up the win, and uh, so all three guys are cleared for the main event triple threat match to determine the new number one contender, and Seth Rollins' his opponent at Extreme Rules, uh, after the uh, Reigns Big Show match, we uh, go backstage, and Kane is bombarded by all the divas, uh, Alicia Fox, Summer Rae Cameron, and Natalya. Uh, and they all bug him, uh, so he agrees to make a Divas Battle Royal for next week, uh, next week on Raw, where, uh, the winner will be the new number one contender to the Divas Championship, currently held by Nikki Bella. What the fuck is taking Ryan so long? I don't know. Uh, Sheamus comes out next to a heel reaction. Uh, he's still got the goofy mohawk, the goofy beard tied in rubber bands, and, um, what does he talk about? He... Yeah. Somebody spam my damn Facebook page, man. That day, is that why you took your fucking sweet ass? Uh, somebody spam my Facebook page. And I didn't want everybody going there with uh, a big tag. I pretty much read the whole show program. for you there. But, uh, well, I, I heard you talking about the, uh, there's a Divas Battle Royal confirmed for uh, next yes. week's Raw. There's talk that uh, some of the NXT Divas are going to be called up. Charlotte went on I Twitter. I was wondering, because they've only got that. how many, like... Fifteen, maybe he was on the main roster. Yeah, there's not many. Yeah, not, even, not even. No, maybe, like 10. maybe ten. Yeah, maybe ten max. But uh, yeah, they're uh, they're they're there's talk that you know Charlotte, maybe Sasha Banks, people like that. Sasha has been rumored for a couple weeks. Was though. scheduled yeah. right the night after WrestleMania. She was backstage. She was there and not uh, scheduled, but rumored. Rumored. Yeah. Rumored. It. She teased it too. She on, was personally uh, starting the rumors, pretty much, or at least spreading them, anyways. But uh, yeah, yeah, they, uh, they had the. 
like we just said, the Lucha Dragons were back this week, but they had Lucha Dragons, mm -hmm. Neville, right. a bunch of guys last week from NXT on Raw, so they didn't want to overcrowd it with another one that, you know, just kind of blends in. You just brought up rumors with Sasha Banks, rumors that Sheamus, um, last Monday on Raw, Dolph Ziggler, no Ziggler on Raw last night either, right? He was on Raw. Was he on Raw? Yeah, he yeah. was, he was. But uh, Ziggler last week, I there believe. was rumors that uh, there was there there were rumors that Sheamus had injured Dolph Ziggler. It was Daniel Bryan, right, with the stitches? No, it was Ziggler. No, it was yeah, it was Daniel Bryan on SmackDown. Yeah. It was Dolph Ziggler on Raw. It turns out that the uh, Dolph Ziggler injury injury on Raw was uh, a storyline yes. related. Um, Daniel Bryan Smackdown. was busted. The Daniel Bryan night. now was busted open, and if you watched SmackDown last Thursday night, like I did, yeah. uh, there was a lot of blood, man. And that's the edited it was version. Too, quite so. a bit of blood. Yeah. yeah and, uh, the there's the video online. You got it on WZROnline.com of him getting stitched up backstage after right. the match. So I mean, he was busted now, legitimately. There's been rumors for for quite some time now that Sheamus is a stiff worker, and you can see that on television. Clearly, I mean, the guy. The rumors, he is a stiff worker. He's him, a stiff bad worker. Bad News Barrett, Cesaro, those guys are. So there was some talk that there was some backstage heat on him. He came out on Twitter and denied it. Well, it was a little further. Because of the Daniel Bryan match, he was accused not of being stiff, of being reckless. Reckless. Which is Reck kind of like a Ryback kind of tag. Like CM Punk talked about Ryback True. being reckless. True. Like hurting him on purpose. Right. Or hurting him because he's incompetent, which either way is bad. Now, of course, Sheamus is going to come out and deny these rumors on Twitter. The fact is, yeah. I mean... He injured Daniel Bryan. That was clearly obvious on on SmackDown. That was, and well, that was been, an accident. Right? That was an accident, right? But it's reckless. It's reckless if he was yeah if he didn't protect him in a situation where he should have. Now yeah, I don't even know what spot caused the uh, there are to get busted there over. have been other people that Sheamus has been in the ring with the where people have gotten hurt by him. He's and, the kind of guy like the old JBL Ron Simmons for yeah, you know, where you're, yeah. if you're gonna wrestle that guy, you're coming out with some bumps and something. Bruises. Something. A little blood. You know. But there was some talk that there was some backstage heat on him, and I I, I still believe it to be the case. Um, obviously, he's not going to come out and say, yeah, there's backstage heat. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Uh, nobody's probably going to say anything to him uh, uh, about like, it, you know, you know like, but there are... Well, like, just stiff. Right, and but there are people, there are people rumbling in their circles backstage that say, man, Sheamus is, you know, and that involves management, and that's where yeah. the backstage heat reports come out of and and sometimes guys will be approached and say hey listen you gotta you gotta watch yourself you gotta and, you know and you don't want to get down to the point kind of like rob van dam have you don't want to get to the point where guys don't want to work with exactly. you because they're afraid you're right. gonna get hurt you know what i mean like i, I don't want to work with that guy he fucking hurts everybody right you True. don't want to get that True. label especially exactly. if you're a top kind of guy like seamus you know right and not only that but i think seamus i mean i put it up on the websites seamus has got a good guy in his corner where if there is some backstage yeah. heat on him he's been known to train with a guy by the name of Paul Levesque. Yeah, Paul Levesque. And, and Triple H. Um, so that's a good guy to have if there's ever a problem. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, like they if you're they uh, train together. Ken Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, right. Know, he hurt Orton. They fired him because they fired he, him. he hurt the poster boy, the precious right. Orton. But right. now, if, if, if Seamus hurt Orton, it would be a different don't story. Think he's getting fired. It would and be I think a different Triple H story. Say, oh, it was an accident. Right. Yeah. Ken exactly. Kennedy, get that fucking record, son of a bitch. <laughs> exactly. Out of here. Exactly. Um, let's see. So, uh, Sheamus defeated Mark Henry. Uh, they're making Sheamus out to be a, a big deal, man. Coming back, they With did the new the look and the heel character. Yeah, he's trying. They're trying. To, they, they're short on heels, so they need to they try are. with somebody. Yeah. I mean, Orton was one of their top heels. They switched him. Right. Bray Wyatt's in this between world where like fans mm -hmm. kind of like him, and he's not strong enough to be a top heel anymore. He's kind of like faded right. out a little bit. So really, you got Seth Rollins, and then you go to Big Show Kane. Yeah. So they need to get some Sheamuses, some guys like that up in that mix because Big Show Kane, uh, nobody, uh, the people are really getting sick. Of having oh. Big Show and Kane in all the top matches. I know, you know? I know. And not only that, but I, that's why they did the uh, the vignettes, you know, leading to Sheamus' return yeah. uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks now. And, and finally it happened last week, so. Um, so the Bray Wyatt promo. Oh, we I talked about, about that. Yeah, well, we already talked about that. So. Yeah, Bray Wyatt, it was, it was a really quick promo. And <laughs> like you said, he's teasing somebody. We just don't know. I think we're going to get subtle hints week after week for that. Uh, we had The Miz defeated Damian Sandow. Here's the problem yeah. I have with this. All right, you've got you've got Miz and Damian Sandow, and they've been a tag team for months and months now, yeah. right? A couple of months ago, they slowly start teasing a split between the two, yeah. right? And it was a slow build up. It really like was. Like the Stardust thing. I mean, they was built and then dropped, built and then dropped, built and, and dropped, finally built and dropped. 
going with it. I was thinking they were going to do it, I don't know, at, at WrestleMania or, or something like that. You would think Sandow would throw Miz out of the Royal Rumble, which I think even had... Or no, Miz got thrown and then Miz was like telling him, no, I'm coming in again. You're, right. You're my second chance, you know. Right. And then Miz Dow took it. But anyways, the, the obvious booking would have been Miz Dow throws his boss Miz out of the Royal Rumble... Miz gets pissed, and that leads to a match at WrestleMania between the two after all these months of being bossed around. He right, takes right. He to stand at the Rumble, the last big show before Mania, and then now that starts the fire, and we get the match at Mania. And then we get the match at Mania. Instead, they kind of started it at Mania in the Andre Battle Royal. Right. Where a big show stood back they, when they were the last three and let those two bicker amongst themselves. But then we're, we're thinking, all right, if they didn't do it at, at WrestleMania, right, or or they didn't do the, the one-on-one match at WrestleMania... Yeah. Then they would go and do it at a pay per view. They do it at Extreme Rules, right? Something. Hype it up. Yeah. So last night they go to the break and they announce coming back on the flip side. We're gonna do Miz versus yes. Damian Sandow, right? You and I are sitting here talking like, well, there'll be a false finish It'll or be DQ an finish or something like yeah. that, and this will continue the feud and lead to a match at the pay per view first. And you in know, a way, there match. was kind of very with strong. the trunks. Yeah, he cheated to get the pin. I mean, he got beat. The whole match, and then schoolboy him held the trunks one two three. Miz gets the so pin. So he kind of robbed two, the victory. So that doesn't end it, I don't think. That doesn't end it. Hopefully, did they, they do the match at Extreme Rules? I gotta assume they're going. Through. I would have kept them out of the ring until Extreme Rules. Have them continue yeah, the no feud. Fake matches. Do the before, first yeah. singles match between the two at the pay per view. Instead, they just throw it on Raw after months and months of yeah. build of of a. Split. It wasn't the blow off match, but you should not have had a match of any kind. Nothing. Until you're the right. Pay-per-view. Just right. a lot of segments where Mizdow won't put up with his shit anymore. Right. Or Miz is getting beaten in a, a different match and Mizdow won't help him, you know. I think like they're that. probably still going to do the match at Extreme Rules. I do too. Maybe a stipulation of some kind. It's if Mizdow wins, Miz has to be my personal assistant. Well, yeah, it's Extreme Rules. Right there is so what it's going to be. I think I just came up with it. Uh, personal assistant thing. Look, Mizdow has to, Miz has to be what Mizdow was. He's got to be Mizdow's Stunt double or personal assistant. I, I think. I think. Mizda, and then they just reverse characters. What they've been doing. Yeah, but he had that with the Bella Twins. I know it's divas, but he just had the Bella Twins uh, it's personal. It's been assistant. a while ago. And, I mean, yeah, they I just Miz Dow was just Mrs. Personal Assistant. Now I, I think they I, reverse. It. I think it's extreme rules, and you know how those matches yeah. at that pay per view have tables, chairs, Some kind of or element to it. Yeah. Something involved there. So, and then we got the main event of uh, of Monday Night Raw. By the way, guys, you can uh, submit your rapid fire questions. So I, ca- I stick right with my now. C plus. By the way, man. Yeah. Nothing yeah. in there really changed my. Uh, mind. Rapid Fire Rapid okay. Fire Facebook.com Slash Christ Do 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 Ryan Clark WZR That's Facebook.com Slash Ryan Clark WZR Top post will ask For your Rapid Fire Questions and comments Which we will get to Here in a few minutes Get them in Get them quick And do not make them More than one or two lines Or we're not reading them This week Not gonna happen Boom I ain't doing it Boom I ain't doing it I Ain't doing it this week all right, uh, the main event, uh, we had, and we're going to open the phone lines, give you the number as soon as we're done with uh, Raw, but the main event, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, and Ryback. They kept this quick, too, and it was pretty much angled out at the end. It was quick. Yeah. You know what else I noticed? Raw ended last night. They went off the air last night at about 11.02, 11.03 Eastern Time. You know why I think they did that? The Jericho thing. They hyped up the podcast, yeah. and if you've noticed when they did the Steve Austin podcast, as soon as Raw went off the air, oh. we would tune into the network, and that's how it already started. Yes. They were like 30 seconds into the you podcast. You missed the first question or two. I was right. finishing right. up play-by-play. Play. Every time they were already into, you know, they, they had already started the podcast. So I think because there's that short delay that WWE's on with yeah. the USA Network, they go off the yeah, air, time. they yeah. give a couple of minutes to people to get online, go to the network, and then start the podcast. And I think that's the reason they went off at 11.02, 11.03 Eastern Time. Yeah, you were having net problems or something in here. Well, but that, I was finishing Raw stuff. But. Yeah, but look who it is. We haven't even given out the phone number yet, and she's here. If you guys want to call us, it's yeah. 518-712-3070. 518-712-3070. Real quick before you get to the caller, who I'm pretty sure I know it is, uh, Orton won the three-way, the triple threat main event, so he will be facing Seth Rollins at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view for the WWE title. We've also got Rusev and John Cena, and we've also got... Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler. No, wait. 
Daniel Bryan, Bryan against, against Bad News Barrett. Bad News Barrett. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, so those are the three matches for WWE's match. Extreme yeah. Rules pay-per-view. John Cena against Rusev once again yes. at Extreme yeah. Rules. This is the grudge match, right? Yeah, this is the uh, rubber ma match. Yeah, yeah. They've each won one. Jackie Baby! What's cracking? Hey, guys. How you doing? Not much. What's going on? Uh, not Tell much. Us. Not much. You have a good week? Yes, I've been busy. I've been crocheting. Yeah. All right. Yep. So, um, so what happened last night on Raw? No, no Rusev and, and and Lana last night, huh? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I I tweeted you and asked you where the heck they were, and I'm like, okay, where are they? They've been mentioned like three or four times. Why aren't they out getting involved? I mean, Lana's back doing the movie. Rusev, I guess, they're just keeping him off until she's ready to come back. I don't know. Yeah, we put up a photo on the website today, Jackie. Uh, it was Lana and Edge on the set of the uh, new WWE Studios film, Interrogation. Uh, we put up that photo today. So we know that Lana Lana was not even backstage at, uh, at Raw last night. Wasn't there. Was on set um, of the new WWE studio. She likes the couple. So there was stuff. no Rusev, Lana, or Stephanie Triple H. Yeah, there was no well, Stephanie Triple H. What was your Triple favorite H part of Raw without all your favorites there? What no Heyman you? either. Hey, what did you enjoy the most uh, last night? Or hate the most? Well, I kind of have to admit that I did like the Triple Threat match. I'm happy that Orton won. It suddenly tells me it's going to be a Triple Threat. Reigns is going to get added in sooner or later, and I'm like, okay, why was even Brad Maddox there? Triple H and Stephanie fired his ass. I can't stand him. Yeah, and, yeah, Maddox. and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm in charge besides him. Like, hello, I could have done a better job than he did. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, Maddox, I mean, Maddox has been away for, for quite some time now. You know, he's been doing the YouTube videos. He's got... Kind of his he own a couple series. Of live events. He didn't remember when he was lost in the cave? Oh, you're right. But he, he just did a match. Yeah. Do you remember seeing him? Like, I didn't know he was, like, in shape like a yeah. wrestler, but he is. Yeah. And he was working live event matches recently as a couple weeks well, ago. Well, he used to be a referee. Uh, when he first started, he was a referee for WWE, and then they put him in the... Uh, a developmental wrestler, and then right. when he got called up, he was doing referee. Was doing a referee. Yeah, he and was then, like a special screw job ref or something. And then he was the general manager with Vicky Guerrero yes. for a while. And now uh, he's back to, oh. well, we, I mean, he was in a backstage segment last night. He was part night, of the authority mix there, so. Yeah, so, but anyway, I think, I mean, listen, we've got Rusev uh, facing John Cena here in a couple of weeks at Extreme Rules, so he's not going to be off TV for all that long. I, th I think it was just a one-week thing. You're going to see Rusev back next week, probably because Lana wasn't backstage at, at Raw last night. I'm guessing next week you're going to have Lana and Rusev both Back on Raw and, uh, you know, continuing the uh, storyline leading into Extreme Rules. Anything else, Jackie? Are they at, are they at SmackDown tonight? I uh, know Rusev is. I don't believe Lana is uh, is backstage, but we'll uh, we'll keep you posted on the website. Have a good week, Jackie. Okay, I'll talk to you guys next week. All right, Bye. be good. All right, if you guys want to call us 518, we love our Jackie. If you guys want to call us 518-712-3070, 518-712-3070, we've only got one open phone line, so if somebody's on the air, uh, just give it a second, call back as soon as we hang up with them. Caller, you are live on WZR TV. What's going on? No. Hey. Heroes. Gone. Uh, we've got open phone lines right now, at least one of them. Not anymore. Caller, you are live on WZR TV. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? It's Stephen uh, Gerbeck in the chat room. How's it going? What's going on, bro? Hey, um, I just wanted to bring your guys uh, to you guys' attention uh, something that happened over the weekend. Um, Dino from the UK, he did a 30-hour uh, um, internet thing to uh, to raise money for cancer over there in the UK. Wow. And um, I just I just wanted to give him a big shout out because it was uh, it was a really really cool thing to see that I mean he raised uh, I think well over five hundred uh, English Did pounds really? and that's know, awesome 
That's awesome, man. I think yeah, I think he did that. I think he does that every year, man. I remember. I remember we called in one year where he was going about 24 hours or 30 hours, hours thing, or something yeah. like that straight. He's a good guy, man. I mean, those those guys are are good. They've been big uh, loyal fans of of WZR TV, and he's got the. Uh, B B W R B W R B W R. Let's give him a plug here. Uh, B W R Radio. Uh, you can check those guys sure out. Steven they do a, a website. Give a give a website if there is one, Steve. Yeah. Um. We don't know. Is there a B? Isn't it like B W R Radio dot com or something like that? B W R Radio dot com or Google it. B W R Radio dot co dot uk. I think. There you I think go. There you go. Check there you go. Google it. B W R Radio. They're they're good guys over there, man. Dino UK and uh, and all those guys. So, good people. Yeah. Anything else, bro? Yeah. So, um, um, I just have another question for you about Raw. I mean, do you think um, because they're in England next week, do you think the crowd's gonna be better? Because man, that crowd was fucking awful last night. Oh my god. It was a step <laughs> down. Uh, yeah. From, yeah. The, from the California crowd the week before, San Jose crowd the week before. I mean, that's always gonna happen because that post WrestleMania show is that real yeah. die hard. Yeah. And yeah. It's la- loud, you know. It's Where the were last they? Show they were the they were Austin last San night. San Jose. Oh, last night was Austin. Yeah, they were in Texas. Yeah. 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 No doubt. I mean, it's gonna vary from week to week. You know what I mean? Whenever they're in the uh, when 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 they're in the Northeast, you get awesome crowds. And they will be for Canada, uh, Florida. Was it Raw or SmackDown at uh, to you? They're coming here on uh, April twentieth. Twentieth. That yeah. would be what a Monday or a Tuesday. That's a Monday. So we got Raw coming here. We got Raw coming here in take two Jake. weeks. You've I got know. To take I know. Jake, man. Stephen, have a good week, bro. All right, you too, guys. Take care. All right, be good. All right, 518-712-3070, 518-712-3070. Get to our live chat room, wzronline.com, slash chat, wzronline.com, slash chat. All right, let's get into, because I did see some I'm tired news. Asleep. I'm trying to get into it here. Let's tired or high? Uh, all right, I know what I'm mean. I'm stoned. Yeah. Smoke some of that good sticky icky. Boom gets that good. I can't do it, man. I can't smoke. You did last night. It puts me to sleep. But what the, what time did I do you it last did it right night? before you went to bed. And I took how many hits? One. One hit. Yeah. I took one hit. I caught my fucking. Too, yeah. I caught my fucking lungs out, and I passed right out, dude. It was ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. So let's take some of these rapid fire questions. All right. Here we go. We'll start out with. Is that good? All right. We'll start out with. Jason Hansen, with NXT literally being the best wrestling brand going today, and with them seeing great success on recent shows outside of Florida, do you think it can become a big brand entity entity uh, over time? Also, Boone, Stefan Struve against Antonio Rodrigo Nagera at UFC 190. Pick. I didn't even know that was official. Oh, God. I gotta go Nagera, but... Man, he might be shot. It might be Struve. You know what? I'm gonna go Nogara. I might go Struve in that one. I want Nogara to win, but I think he's shot. I think he's. What he's did shot. I say to you last night about NXT? I said NXT All about the touring, yeah, yeah. with the live events and the, listen, they just drew almost five thousand fans um, in California. Yeah, granted, that was, granted, yeah. that's WrestleMania weekend. You've got everybody in town, Every so that's not the building they're in. That's yeah. not a. That's kind of an unfair comparison to where I'm about to go here. Although they did do good in they Ohio, they did do shows in Ohio, oh, okay. which they drew sellout crowds of good? you know two thousand. I think it was between two and three thousand yeah. for both shows in Ohio. Yeah. One was in Cleveland, the other was just outside of Cleveland. Or yeah. something. Uh, Columbus, Columbus, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, they did very well there. So here's the deal: WWE main roster house shows are only drawing four, five, six thousand people. If NXT goes on the road, and if they can draw two, three thousand people at these events, do you could, think they could in every could, city they went to? I don't think every city, but I think there's going to be certain markets. Where NXT is going to promote a live event, and they're going to draw what's, two, three, four thousand people. Low end maybe. WWE live event attendance. What's the low, low end? end is four or five thousand. So at the very least, the, the raw and Even the live event. events, the uh, WWE live events, do four thousand or better. 
Well, then I gotta say NXT. Better, if right? that's the case, and I'm just going off your numbers there. If that's the case, then NXT's gotta be able to sell at least a thousand in any city they go to. That's what I say. At least a thousand, that's which is with, better than with, TNA, better than the Ring of Honor. With the WWE Maybe machine better. behind it, exactly. promoting these events now. And the name, the the, the, the roster they have there is, <coughs> is the kind of wrestlers that those little cities will come out to see because those Absolutely. are the diehard wrestling fans. But dream fighter. What, what I had said to you is that and if if. If NXT was ever to be able to match the main roster WWE house show numbers... They won't be, but yeah. Vince McMahon, I'm telling you, Vince, Mc, Vince McMahon is not going to let NXT out beat draw, WWE's... No. No way. Out, outdraw WWE's main house shows. They'll he's put not going to let they'll that They'll put happen. them in the B cities, the C cities, and they'll put WWE he's, in the A cities, so Vince, they're guaranteed to sell, you know. Vince won't let it happen, man. There's no. no way that Vince would allow NXT if it were ever to happen, which it's not going I to happen. I don't think he would sabotage <laughs> NXT's advertising. I just think he would I, sell harder his main roster and, and not put as much into the selling and promoting <laughs> The NXT show. I don't think he the would go second, out of his way to fuck NXT. The second, I'm, mark my words, the second Vince McMahon gets his hands on NXT, whether it be creative, whether it be whatever, the second Vince McMahon gets his hands on NXT... It becomes ECW on sci-fi instead, become, of, it, it, don't, instead do, of ECW. Do Rome. not. The reason that NXT is so good right now, and I really believe this, is Triple H. And Triple H is in charge of NXT. I think and true. I feel, I've said it time and time again, Triple H is more hip. He's more with the times. I've always said that when Vince McMahon steps down, and that's going to be the day that he dies, Vince yeah. ain't going to let go of WWE until the day that he dies. Yes, when Triple H takes over, WWE becomes a much better No, I'm not going to disagree with until that. Until that happens. Yeah, but I will disagree with the NXT is what it is, and it's because of Triple H. I think it's because of the roster of guys they have. Is that they're not forced to read scripts for promos <coughs> or have characters written out for them. But who's who has that say? Who tells them? There is no. That's my point. If they were forced to follow scripts and this and that, like the main roster guys, does, it doesn't matter if Triple H, Vince, or anybody else is overseeing it. If they're forced to go through the process of here's your promo, this is what you're doing in your, ma you know, and they do have producers for the matches and they do give them some guidance on who, the promo. Who allows them to have that freedom? Triple H. Yeah. So, but, uh, all right, but I'm saying it's the guys, and it's the guys yeah. not being restrained is why it's a good product. I agree. Triple H is the guy that's not making them go through the scripts and this and that. So yeah, I guess you could give Triple but H the credit. If but Vince were to come in yeah. and 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 take over NXT from yeah. Triple H, which my point is that you're putting Triple H over like this great from oh, no. it's like Paul Heyman could take a bunch of shit talent and make a great show. Right. I don't know if Triple H can do that. He's got the best talent in the world and he's not and he's letting them be themselves. I like so that. So obviously the show's gonna be good. Yeah. yeah. But that yeah. doesn't mean Triple H is doing anything that takes talent. No, and Triple H is got a creative out of the way of some Listen, great talent. There's an NXT creative team that, that writes a yeah, lot no, of they get stuff down there. And promos too, and they yeah. get, you know. And and you gotta give credit to the NXT writing team that's down there as well, but everything goes through Triple H. Yeah. Like on the main roster, everything goes through Vince McMahon. And you see the difference, at least I can. Yeah. You can see the difference in the main product versus the NXT product. And the NXT product to me just it's more hip. It's they've got more freedom, like you said, it's man. It's talented just more people hip. Are allowed to be talented. And I, I think the reason that it's more hip and yeah. more what fans want is because Triple H is a younger guy, he knows what fans yes. want, or he knows what fans want, and he's giving it to him and with NXT. Then you've got yeah. Vince, who is so out of touch, and the shit that you see on Raw and SmackDown, yeah. every, that's a Vince product. Well, uh, this is a Triple H product. And WWE product's way overproduced, way overwritten, way over everything. Right. Whereas NXT's very bare bones. It's not a lot of promos, there's not a lot of storylines, it's just talented wrestlers in good wrestling matches. Right. So obviously the shows are going to be good. Yeah. WWE has the same level. I mean, if you look at their talent, Seth Rollins, Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose, you go, you know, now, you go through the list of talent. They got great performers, just like NXT. The difference is they're so over scripted, so overproduced, so over everything. That's Vince. Whereas they're not allowed to just. Yeah. They are. They're already talented guys. That's why they're where they are. Right. If they're allowed to be themselves, like the Attitude Era guys were, it'd be a whole different ballgame. And I think that's why fans, at least online fans 
like NXT so much more it's is because they're allowed to go out there. They're allowed to do the high flying stuff yes. in their matches. It's they're allowed similar. with promos. Eh, dude, that's yeah. what people like. It's ECW. It's ROH. It's it's. And I think yeah. Triple Triple H knows that, and that's why he's doing NXT the way all the he's while, doing it. Like all the while, doing, he gets all this credit that. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve credit, but I'm I'm also saying it's not like oh that show's so good. No, it's not all him because Triple H is a genius. That show's good because Triple H is smart enough smart enough to hire the best talent from across the world. Yeah, right. I mean, he get anybody that's Absolutely. got a name on the indie scene or in a ROH or in a New Japan. Right. He gets them, and then he fucking lets them do what they do, and that's why it's so good. Now, that's what he people was trying want. to right. take. A Samoa Joe and say no, well, I got a better idea for you. Right. Even though this right. Samoa Joe things worked for twenty years, let's. You're in the big leagues now. Let's try and make you let's Samoa that, Jack instead. Or, let's, you know, like, let's well, say this. fuck with something that's working. Vince McMahon should take notes from NXT. He never will. What, the what is, is that? that? Uh, what is that? It's like a feather or something. <laughs> Vince <laughs> should take notes from NXT. All right, what else do we have here? If you guys want to call us, we've got open phone lines right now. 518-712-3070. 518-712-3070. Anthony Remy's got a good one, man. Anthony Remy asks for our thoughts on Tough Enough returning it. What do you think, man? It's a different show altogether because there's no Steve Austin hosting it. Bill mm-hmm. DeMott, obviously, is not going to be the head trainer. Goldust said, uh, and he's under consideration yeah. uh, for that. Anyway, my point being, as far as what our thoughts on the show, you mm-hmm. can't compare it to the old one because the old one was the Steve Austin show, first right. of all. Right, right. He was hosting, so he's right. not going to be hosting it. That was as far as the entertainment. As far as the training session, the which month, is the other half yeah. of the show, it was all Bill DeMott as yeah. the head trainer. Yeah. We're not going to have that either. So it's going to be a different show as far as how it's hosted and entertaining-wise. Right. It's going to be a different show as far as the approach to training and as far as showing that approach on TV. And it'll obviously be a different cast of reality guys. You know, or in, I think they're going with like guys that are have actual experience, right? Isn't that what we reported? Yeah, they did a... Uh, 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 like somebody wants to do, like, get all the NXT guys and have them go through it, and then there was another idea to just make sure that they have certain five years experience on the indie scene. You know. Some some indie workers are, are probably going to be, uh, be yeah. in there, but we don't know the uh, the cast just yet. But, um, we don't know the coaches. We don't know shit. They revealed the uh, debut date. It's June. Yeah. I can't remember the exact, uh, the exact remember, date. Yeah. But uh, it's going to be on, in, in June on the USA Network. But the format of Tough Enough, oh, it's not gonna be on I like it. It's not going to be on WWE Network. No, it's, it's going to be, be on the USA, USA Network. Wow. Yeah, USA That's Network. That's kind of weird. USA Network. And then USA Network announced SmackDown coming in 2006. Yes. They announced a deal with The Rock to right. uh, do some reality that stuff. starting to produce a lot uh, of these shows, The Rock. I know, He's got I the know. HBO show. They and then they announced the Tough Enough, dude. USA Network They're making getting on some the wrestling moves. train, man. Yeah, right. They're getting on the wrestling train, full, uh, full fledged. I like the format of Tough Enough, though, and uh, I'm glad to see it returning. I admit, I'm going to admit, Austin uh, hosting it was the best it was part. Awesome. Like, that last, when he would have this final four or whatever, final mm-hmm. three, where they would all be holding belts in right. a ring, in a dark re- in a, a dark room in a yep. ring, and Austin would kind of talk, to them, <laughs> go by one by one, and, and give right. them like their critique. To be that was the best it part was of the awesome. show. Awesome, I know. Every week, I know. Not and the they'd fucking, have to hand in their belt. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Hand it on the wall. Like that was the only shit that I really enjoyed about that most recent uh, season of Tough Enough. Awesome. Now the original cool, series, man. I like because Tad well, Taz was awesome. He was the Bill Taz DeMott role. Great. Taz is with TNA now, now so that TNA. can't so happen. It's, like, it's yeah. going to be a completely different show than any kind we've ever seen. Even if the format's the same. Who's going to be that head guy, That's man. what I'm asking. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Jericho? I don't know. I don't know. Um, somebody that can talk. We've know. got Arturo Velasquez Jr. When will we see Sting again? I mean, he said in an interview after Raw on the network last week, and he said it to the Associated Press during WrestleMania weekend that it's probably his only match was Triple H or WrestleMania, and then it was also hints at maybe I'll do something at I think it was SummerSlam or Survivor Series, yeah, or yeah. I'll do the Taker thing at WrestleMania next year if it's a go. But and then we've also reported that they shared a locker room backstage, Sting and Taker. At Sting and Taker, right, right. They were at the airport together. And Hogan and Brock as well shared a exactly. Locker room. And they were at the airport together going home. So obviously they've been talking, and the word coming out of there was Undertaker said he felt physically good. Mm-hmm. After working a break, you know, having a concussion last year with right. Tyler being rushed to the hospital, oh, that was the debacle last yeah, year. Yeah, right. a mess last right. year. This year, yeah. he said he felt good. He feels great. He feels like he wants to work next year. And, yeah. and him and Sting were talking about 
doing the match against each other. As far as when will we see Sting again, if he does something at SummerSlam, probably about a month before then to kind of build up things. Uh, but I don't... I, My it's, bet would be if we see Sting at, in a wrestling match ever again, it's yeah, next year's it's Mania. WrestleMania. Yeah. I, Sting is, is gone for... A while, yeah, at the time least. time being, you're not going to see too many Sting entrances or promos. Yeah, or I, I would say at least, uh, if he works SummerSlam, he's, like I said, maybe a month before that to hype things yeah. up. If not, probably not until next year, until to maybe be honest time with next you. Year, yeah. um, who's next, man? So Ali? We've got Ali Adair, or Adar, if I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. He That's said, the guy with the t-shirt. Uh, he said, did you guys see Dean Mitchell's, uh, Dino UK's 30-hour charity radio marathon? He's done everything... T the Woodland, what? He's done everything to the Woodlands. To the Woodlands and, and the WZR Army Proud. Where the fuck? I think he that? means he's done everything to make everyone in the WZR. So here's the run. URL we need to give out. It's justgiving.com slash Dino B S R. That's justgiving.com slash D E A N O B S R. If y'all can give something to his uh, his campaign, uh, he's raising money for uh, for cancer. cancer. Yeah. Uh, so go over there and uh, and Show your support. donate some money if uh, if you guys can. That'd be awesome. Uh, Michael Benitez, oh. have you noticed? Have you noticed? <laughs> the Bella Twins have been on a losing streak these last couple of weeks, and it's been Nikki Bella getting pinned. Is there something up with that? I thought that said pimped from here. Yeah, no, I, I haven't don't noticed. Know. She has been taking the pins, and yeah, they've been losing their last John? few no, matches. Stupid. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm sure he's pinning her that's every not, which way, but I'm I, sure he is. Yeah, I, don't I know. haven't noticed the uh, the Bella Twins uh, losing streak, but now they. I don't really up, pay man. attention to the diva shit that much. I uh, listen, Nikki. Is dating John Cena? That's only gonna do her favors in WWE. Her career is fine. Dating the uh, the top guy in the company. Now, what if they if they break up? Uh, that Different could story. be an that could be an issue for Nikki if they if they break up. Um, who's next? We've got Tom Nelson. Tom uh, Nelson next. says, "With AJ Lee now retired, where would you put her amongst the top divas ever? Top five? Top ten? Uh, uh, man, you gotta you've go, got Sable, you've got you gotta go Sunny, Trish, Lita, number one and number two. Trish, Lita, that's four. And right then if there. you're going to put Sable and Sunny, you're just talking about the hot chicks. I'm, I'm talking about overall name value, every, every everything. And Sable, would, I mean, she could powerbomb dudes, so that was pretty cool. And China's got to be up really there. Good matches worth of shit. Yeah, I would, I would do Trish, Lita, Sable. I'd go top ten. Sunny, China, and then... There's that next string like Mickey James and people like Gail Kim. Mickey James, Gail Kim. But uh, I would put her in the top ten, absolutely. Top ten. Yeah, and as not far top as, five though. As far as the hottest, she'd be in the top five. As far as the best overall package, top ten. Top ten. Top ten. Near the bottom yeah. of the top ten, probably. Near the bottom of the top ten. Yeah, I mean, you're talking stuck around. Nine or ten, yeah. She had that diva pipe bomb. That was an awesome promo. Yeah. She had great matches. Yeah. She was hot as fuck. <laughs> so she's a diva, you know. Um, let's see, we've got Stephen Grabeik. Uh, Raw was awful last night. They'll be in England next week. You think the show will be better? Crowd with, will be better. With England next week, you're going to have an awesome crowd. That's when we were talking about crowds earlier. We'll taped England, day, so it won't be live. England, Canada. Not only that, yeah, that's another thing, like yeah. Boone just brought up. Uh, spoilers for next week's Raw and SmackDown on Monday... Uh, they're about a five-hour difference, so spoilers... These are like 3, 4 p.m., right? Spoilers for Raw will be out by 5 o'clock Eastern yeah. Time, and then on Tuesday, the spoilers will be out again Wrong. by about 5 o'clock yeah. Eastern Time. So when we come on the air next week, uh, SmackDown's already going to be over. It's going to be taped. We're going to have spoilers up on the website. But uh, right. if you guys don't want to be spoiled for next week's Raw, stay off the, uh, the websites Monday afternoon next week. Mike Butler says, with Sheamus and Bad News Barrett working as a team on SmackDown this week, do you think this is going to be a permanent team, or will they be included in some type of three- or four-way IC title match at Extreme Rules? Sheamus and Barrett. Well, we huh? know Barrett and Brian are fighting for the IC title at Extreme Rules. So right, that, we already got now that. Now, they might be changing that to a triple threat with Ziggler in there, I don't know, but we know Barrett and Brian so far. Oh, and he could do a fatal four-way, too, well, like, Sheamus like, could be like in that, there. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very true. Him. Sheamus and, uh, and uh, Ziggler could be the other two. So it's possible. Let's see what happens next week on Raw, if they do, like, a tag team match type deal, uh, where all 
all four I guys. I think it's going to be a four. Yeah. I think so. I think so. I agree with that. Um, let's see. We've got Joseph Gallo. When will you and Matt Boone uh, be going to see ROH in New York City? Oh. Hopefully soon, man. Whenever the uh, the next, I think they they've already announced they're going to be. They're not running the Hammerstein Ballroom anymore. I can't think of the name right now. Um, oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Oh. The terminal. I think it's the New terminal York. in New York City, but they've got an event coming up. I want to say June. Uh, so maybe we can uh, we can make it down for that. I want to go to UFC cool. and MSG. That's what I want to yeah. go to in New yeah. York City. I want to go to UFC's first show at Madison Square Garden. When we I come down been though, to the garden. I gotta go. Man. Yeah. When we come down though, we'll uh, we'll meet up if you're in the area, man. Beers, Beers on, on us. us. Yeah. Beers on us. Lorenzo Dozier says John Cena pointed out you truly don't know who will be the face of WWE in a few years because there are so many people. Breaking out as stars. Do you believe there can be more than one guy instead of, quote-unquote, the guy? Now, what's interesting about that is that for the longest time, it was always one guy. The guy. Bruno. Right. Hogan. Fucking and those Flair. But during the Attitude Era, there was two. Uh-huh. There was Austin. There was Rock. Yep. And then you had the next tier, like Triple H, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, RBC, right. you know, really great guys, but the guy was Austin, and then The Rock joined him, so there was two the guys. Mm-hmm. Now it's back to the one formula, John Cena. John Cena. And for a while, it looked like Cena, CM Punk might become the new the guys. And right. That whole thing went away. And Daniel right. Bryan looked like he might be coming that rarefied era. I guess Randy Orton's up there, but not the guy. Yeah, he's, he's not, not in the, the same guy. league yeah, with no. John Cena, not even close. So, um, uh, but yeah, a few years from now, is, will it be one guy or two guys? I mean... I don't know. Every time a guy comes to the end of his thing, like Brad Hogan, it's always like nobody's ever going to come along and be as good as them. And then Austin and Rock came along. Somebody comes along, so right? You know, right, nobody right. thought Hulkamania would ever get even touched like, right. in our lifetimes. And then Austin and Rock made Hulkamania look like a fucking joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Cena's been doing it for the last 10, 12, 15 years, yeah, whatever. Cena's Who's coming next? I don't. I mean, they wanted it to be Roman Reigns. Right. Clearly not going to be. Not now. I think it's going to be a Kevin Nash, Shawn Michaels thing where they wanted Diesel to be the guy and then it turned out to be Shawn Michaels. Right. I think they right. want Roman Reigns. I think it's going to turn out to be Seth Rollins. I think Rollins might be the face of Rollins the is making a name for himself. Cena, these he's days, damn man. good, man. Uh, Joseph Gallo's back. Did John Cena request a new U.S. title belt? Yes. Yes, he did. Yeah, and he they're did. making it. So. And that gives you a sign that it looks they're like he's in, that belt serious. he's in for a yeah. long title reign, too. I mean, they could always... Go back to whatever they need to go back. And hopefully, it's the plan. I mean, they want Brian. It's not the spinner belt. Yeah, God, not again. Uh, they want Brian to be Daniel Bryan to be the IC champ. Make that title mean more. Right. They want him to help Big SmackDown seem more important, especially now that they're moving next year. Right. Trying to establish this show's important too, so that when they get on the new channel, that you know it'll be a show you have to watch, must see TV. Right. So they want Brian to make that IC belt. They want Cena to make that US belt, and then Rollins is going to be the the world uh-huh. champ heel guy. You know. Uh-huh. I think Cena's in for a fairly long reign, yeah. and Dan O'Brien too with the accent, kind of like you said. So, Vincent Nugent is up next. That's you. All right, I'll oh. take this one too. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think about the weekly open challenges for the WWE United States Championship from John Cena? Is this making the U.S. title even more relevant? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. clearly. I mean, you've got John sure. Cena defending it on a week-to-week the basis. The only criticism you know? I would have is that it's an open challenge, so anybody can get a shot at the title. Yeah. It should be hard to get a shot at the title. If it's an important title, then you need to earn your way. Right. Like, I fought hard and long for two months to get this shot at the title. But... Now, as opposed to who wants to come have a shot at the title, but anybody the, can. the counter to that is you've got John Cena out there every week defending the U.S. title. Yeah. It gets more exposure I think that gets to the over, U.S. title. I yeah. think that gets him over, and while he's holding the belt, the belt's over, but if it's... If it's lost in one of these open challenges, which I don't see happening, then the the actual idea of an open challenge means something because shit, you never know what could happen. That fucking title could change. True. But you don't want to do that too soon because then the title hasn't gotten to a point where it's important yet, and it's right. already becoming a title. They're flip flopping around everywhere, so right. it's kind of tricky how they handle it here. You know. We got about five minutes to go. We're gonna finish up these rapid fire questions, then we'll get out of here. If you like what you heard tonight. Tune back in every dude, Tuesday <laughs> night from 8 to 10 Eastern Time. Every Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time, WZR TV, Tuesdays. It's a good time. 
every Tuesday night. Plus, Very it's tough. National Beer Day. National National Beer Day. Motherfucker, if that would have spilled on me, we would be throwing oh, down Oh, you right said now. that last week, and he ain't throwing down with nobody. Matt Johnson <laughs> is up next. Matt Johnson said, I thought Raw was decent this week. A few low points, but some good stuff as well. What do you guys think of Sheamus? I personally think as a heel, his new look and theme are fitting. I'm also impressed with Eva Marie lately. She's been training her ass off with Brian Kendrick, taking bumps, snap suplexes, etc. Kudos to her for putting in the work. Thoughts? First Eva of all, Marie, I don't really know that about Eva Marie. Uh, Eva Marie's videos? been putting stuff up on uh, on Twitter, uh, okay. some photos. She's training out in California at Brian Kendrick's school. Uh, Kendrick, who was recently down in NXT, training some... I gotcha, Pac. Right. Uh, was training down at NXT uh, recently. Or not training, but helping train guys down at NXT. So it's good to see Eva Marie taking things serious. I mean, we know how bad Eva Marie in ring. She's terrible. Yeah. All right, she's no matter terrible. how hard she works, she'll never be good. But she could get but good enough that she can work matches and it won't be the a fact, joke. The fact is, is she's trying to, That's all you can ask, especially from a chick that hot that could get by just being the hottest chick in the company. Right, she right. She could still get all the media stuff because they'll want the prettiest face on the TV. Right. Just <clears throat> magazine covers. She'll still get all that shit, but she's actually taking it serious and wanting to learn the craft. So you got to give them, you know, credit. And Seamus' new look, listen, <laughs> it's cool. they, aired the, uh, they aired the vignettes uh, for the last, you know, month or two no. uh, leading to his return. He's got that stiff style. The new look, I mean, sure, it looks corny, it but looks it's stupid, something different. And, it's a, something and as a heel, it's a heel look. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it might look stupid, but it works for what he's doing. It works for what he's doing, yeah. exactly. Um, we've got... Lance Winter up next. So, we get one awesome Raw a year. The one after Mania, then back to the same old Two. stuff. Like old that school every Raw year. is awesome, too, old, usually. Old and that should be up year. soon, shouldn't yeah. it? I don't know. I what thought they did it in January last year. Why didn't they do one in January? I, I think they do it whenever they want, man. I thought they were making a date a tradition, though. Remember we were reporting that last year that they were going to make this date the tradition each year? I don't, I don't, I don't remember, remember the exact date. January, but, what right. we got next, man? We got Ali Adair's back, and he says Finn Balor has come... Out at the SmackDown taping, no confirmation if Dark Match or a live show looks dark to me. So he's saying Finn Balor worked the Dark Match. All right, no doubt. We'll uh, we'll have more on that after we go off the air here on the uh, on the websites. We'll put it up wzronline.com. Vincent Nugent back again. Do you guys think Brian Byron Sexton works well as a color commentator than as a play-by-play commentator? Personally, he works fine in the color role, in my opinion. Color's a lot easier. I mean, Color's you know, a lot easier, yeah, man. So, I mean, I know from this That's show, I get to JBL. Just, I mean, JBL me. gets to throw in whatever yeah. he wants as color. I remember uh, back in the day, I was the host of this show. We always talked about these old stories. But yeah. I was the host, and I would put so much fucking work <laughs> into the show. But you were everybody's favorite, because all you had to do was just show up when show the red light came on. It. Crack dick jokes for an hour or two, and then everybody thought he's so funny and entertaining, and Boone's fucking, you know... Now so I got it all, man. Rolls now I, I find it. that I'm I'm the like, host. I like this chair a lot better. I can just show up and bullshit and have fun. And you got to do all the preparation. And well, what am I going to talk about this week? With with me being, I got to set the pace yeah. of the show. What are what we going to do in hour one? Exactly. What are we going to do in hour two? How the many play times are you going to interrupt me when I'm trying to get to a fucking point? You know? I've interrupted <laughs> you quite a bit tonight, man. I've interrupted you quite a bit tonight. All right, uh, what's up next, man? With uh, with the gene. Gene Colum? Gene Colum? Colum? I'm not sure how to say that. Uh, Hogan took a bump at WrestleMania 31. think he has passed the physical possible match at WrestleMania 32. Oh, it was one bump. It was one bump, but he's not allowed to do that one bump unless they pass physical, unless he went into business for himself. And I was thinking that, because Scott Hall took a fucking backdrop on the floor. Yeah. You yeah. can't tell me Scott Hall passed that physical. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's guys like Mick, you know, that are still... It's but, gonna be guy. I mean... So listen. I think they just went into business, like, hey... I'm going to take a bump. What's the way they're going to do? Yell at me? Like, if I fucking feel you like gotta, it. You're, you're going to... Listen. As far as a match, though, as, that has to be As far cool. as a match, yeah. you got to do a full-blown physical. If you're taking a bump or two, I really don't think you have you to still have do. a full physical. You still do. I don't... If it's in the script that, yeah, he's going to hit you and you take a bump, that's got to be... Yeah, they have to medically for... Very fucking strict reasons. I think it's WWE, and if it's one or two bumps, yeah, you're, then... You're giving your acting like it's laissez-faire. No, they're very serious about it. All right. Now, if Hogan decides when I'm out there, I'm going to fucking drop down after the guy hits me. What are they they can't stop him. Right. So I Com- think that's what it was. A couple more here. Uh, Jason Hansen, what do you think of China's recent videos? Man, mm. um, 
A goes she on to say, ever since Austin asked about China uh, in the Hall of Fame in the podcast, she's been a wreck. I think yeah. that's one reason why they don't want certain questions asked. That's exactly why. Listen, I put up a video yesterday of China. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go check the video that I put up from yesterday. Brutal. She's not sober, clearly. She's not coherent. Watch the videos. Yeah. Uh, that the one that I put up yesterday, and the ones before that were really, really sad. The one that I put up yesterday, embarrassing would be another word. To use. I mean, if, if that's you and you see, and that's your video, could you imagine seeing that when you get your head cleared up? When when she like, gets God, cleared up and yeah. she goes back and watches uh, She's the one, stupid. the one from yesterday, it was really, really sad, to be honest with you guys. It was She could barely talk. I almost know. felt bad putting it up on the website. That's, I haven't even seen this one That's yet. how bad it, it was. Way worse than the other ones? It's ten times worse really? than the others. I don't see how it could be ten the times dude, worse. Dude, as soon as we... I will I'll show you. Alright. All right. Vincent Nugent, is that where we uh, no. Wesley. I think I'm getting sick, god damn it. Uh, Wesley Goodman says, what was up with Cena's eye last night on Jericho's podcast? He got a shiner, man. Or he had a... Uh, yeah, I guess uh, a car dust scratched him up. Somebody scratched yeah. yeah, that's who he was in a match with, with uh, Stardust. So, something happened uh, Something happened there. Vincent Nugent, one more. This week's edition of WWE NXT will feature footage and matches from WrestleMania 31 Access and the San Jose Show. Oh, I really? Think. That live event there, Aaron? Somehow? You are right. Uh, you guys looking forward into watching that on the WWE Network? We are, man. Uh, at least I am. Uh, WWE, they're going to air... Stuff that happened with NXT, yeah. like he said, during WrestleMania and Access. The thing that sucks about the else, NXT so. thing is that when they were announcing the new network number and all that stuff and the new programming, they said it was going to become a monthly special. Yeah, that happened. Network, and it's still going to be a quarterly. That would have been awesome, though. One a month? Yeah. They like, had their own pay-per-view. I would have watched. I would have watched every single one. Absolutely. I'm still going to watch every single one. What would you do over here? We got two more. I don't know what happened there. Larry Smith says, Is it possible to have Triple H in charge over WWE like Raw and SmackDown? By next year, with the new move of SmackDown going to USA, no. Like the day, uh, Ryan the said day best, Vince McMahon yeah. dies is the day Triple H. As long as he's got a heartbeat and can hold a pencil in his hand, he's calling the shots. And he's sure. going to run Raw and SmackDown until that time comes. And the last one here, one more from Wesley Goodman. Uh, that's a funny one. Quit there, reading though. these long ass questions. It takes too long. I agree, one hundred percent. Wesley, keep that in mind for next week, children. See. Yeah. We're not the only ones. That's Tuesday night, brother. That one went quick, and I don't think it was good. Man. Uh, it was a good show. It was a good show. I'm very well, uh, let's, let's let the people. Uh, uh, I'm alive. The whole I'm alive. Was, like very monotone and not. I'm really alive. Better. Yeah, I'm not. I'm here. I'm That's what they here. like. They like the news. They like the the more. This is know, one of the shows you like. It's more of a nerdy information show. What's I like nerdy. Information I like the, the show. funny, entertaining. These guys are crazy show. Like the, you can't believe this shit. Like on the t-shirt. We didn't we didn't rush through rapid fire tonight. We took each each yeah, no, question. Everybody asked. We took the live phone calls. To anybody that called. It was a good you news know? and talk program, but it was not a good entertainment good. program. Well, how can they how can they let us know? Well, they can let us know what they thought of the show by posting their feedback. Yeah. Uh, you can reach me at facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. That's facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. For him, you can leave him feedback at facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. That's facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WCR. Let us know what you thought. Let us know what you like. We'll do more of it. Let us know what you didn't like. We'll do less of it. This is how we give you exactly what you want to see and hear each and every Tuesday Submit night. Submit your feedback. Please All right. Um, if you like what you heard tonight, if you didn't like what you heard tonight, who get cares? Your hair and check. Yeah. Yeah, get your hair and check. Uh, come back every Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time, WZROnline.com. we got a lot of news that's going to go up on the website. Stephen McMahon. Going to be off television for over a month. What? Not coming back for over a month. Ronda Rousey. Roman Reigns' yeah. family as well. Really upset. We're going to tell you who was upset. We know that his father, his uncle, who else? We're going to let you know. Stay tuned to WZROnline.com. A lot of backstage news going up on the website right now when we go off the air. Smackdown spoilers coming in just a little bit. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and we will see you guys next Tuesday night, 8, 10 Eastern Time, WZROnline.com for Matt Boone. That's me. Brian Clark. Yeah, that's him. Say, see you next Tuesday night, 8, 
10 Eastern Time, WZROnline.com. <laughs> <laughs>